Last week in the Hurricanes season opener, brand new head coach Larry Coker made his debut, an impressive one, at State College, Pennsylvania. The Hurricanes racked up 602 yards in total offense. They did it on the ground and in the air. Ken Dorsey threw three touchdown passes, leading the Hurricanes to an easy 33-7 win over Penn State in the season opener. On defense, it was an impressive debut for defensive ends Andrew Williams and Jerome McDougal. In fact, the entire Hurricane front four had a good night against Penn State, constantly pressuring the Nittany Lion quarterbacks. The Hurricanes will open their home schedule against the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Their head coach is former UM defensive coordinator Greg Schiano. Schiano was a winner in his debut as a Division I head coach as the Scarlet Knights beat the University of Buffalo in their opener 31 to 15 behind 177 yards by Dennis Thomas. It's the Hurricanes and Rutgers coming up next here on Fox Sportsnet. in Miami. It's Miami Hurricanes football presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Florida. Today, the University of Miami Hurricanes host the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers in their first Big East matchup of the 2001 season. Hi, everybody. I'm Frank Fort, along with my partner, John Congemi. And, John, a very impressive start to the season for Miami up at Penn State last week. A 33-7 win fueled by some career performances from, namely, Ken Dorsey and Clinton Portis. Both had career high, Franks, and that's what you needed to have on the road. Clinton Portis had a great job on the ground. You see 17 rushes for 164 yards, but Ken Dorsey, 20 of 27 for 344, three touchdowns. He would have had over 400 yards passing had it not been for a drop ball down the sidelines by Ethnic Sands. But what a performance. He spread the football out almost a 75 percent completion percentage against the Nittany Lions and Portis was very hard running through the tackles and he wanted 15 carries you told Larry Coker as a side note he got 17 so he owes Larry two carries today against Rutgers and a great job by that offensive line well Miami knows what they have a tight end and Jeremy Shockey caught seven balls last week but how about the young wide receivers and today without the senior leadership of Daryl Jones who's out with a sprained knee I thought the young guys did a great job catching the football blocking showing great effort especially it starts with the tight end though he did a great job Shockey catching the football outside. Watch him muscle his way through the five-yard line and get into the end zone for the Hurricanes. That's what they needed down the per perimeter. But down the middle of the field, you see a great catch here by number five, Andre Johnson, one of the youthful receivers, and then a touchdown catch in the end zone by Ethnic Sands. He ensures the catch, ensures the victory for the Hurricanes. The young receivers have to come up big again in the beginning of the season. They have to give confidence to their quarterback, gain the confidence of their quarterback, and I think they will. Well, both head coaches made their Division I head coaching debuts last week. Larry Coker, of course, for Miami. Greg Schiano for Rutgers, the former defensive coordinator for the Hurricanes, makes his return to South Florida. Yeah, for two years, he controlled the sidelines for the defense. There you see Greg walking the middle of the field during the rain before the football game. He's very excited what he brings to Rutgers. He brings excitement, enthusiasm, and he has a great defensive scheme. Watch for a lot of blitz package from Greg Schiano. He loves to do that. He loved to do it at Miami. He'll do it again at Rutgers. Well, if Rutgers has any chance at all today, they're going to have to get the ground game going. They have a guy that can do it in Dennis Thomas, who had 177 yards last week against Buffalo. He's going to have to have a big afternoon, Frank, because they start a true freshman at quarterback, but you can see the moves inside the tackles. Does a nice job. He's a hard runner. 30 carries for 177 yards against Buffalo and one touchdown. But the last four games, including Buffalo, he had 508 yards, four touchdowns. And he played against some tough defenses in Notre Dame, West Virginia, Syracuse, and Buffalo. So he did a good job. He's going to have to have a big afternoon to stay in this game for Rutgers. All right, it's raining at the Orange Bowl. We've delayed the kickoff 45 minutes, but we're ready to go. We'll have the opening kickoff between Miami and Rutgers right after this on Fox Sports Net. University of Miami football on Fox Sports Net is being brought to you in part by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Florida. The best health plan is the one you don't have to think about. Here at the Orange Bowl, it's the Big East opener for both Miami and Rutgers. The Hurricanes wearing their green jerseys today. Rutgers wearing the all-white. Frank Fort and John Congemi with you on Fox Sports Net. Rutgers won the toss and deferred till the second half. Miami will get the football to start the game. Larry Coker, 1-0. The offensive coordinator for the past six seasons under Butch Davis, and he takes over after Butch left for the Cleveland Browns of the NFL. On the other sideline, the Hurricane defensive coordinator for the past two seasons, and it, right after the regular season last year, he was offered and accepted the head coaching job at Rutgers. His home state is New Jersey, and John, Greg's made a lot of noise up in New Jersey about keeping the best players home. His first recruiting class was, by all accounts, pretty good. He's calling it 
the state of Rutgers. And that's who Miami's facing really today, the state of Rutgers. He's made it his hometown, his home state, and that's what he's trying to do in recruiting, trying to keep those kids that go to Penn State and other places around the area in the state of New Jersey and at Rutgers. There's your temperature, 88 degrees, 80% 80 humidity. The forecast for intermittent showers we had heavy downpour before the game. In fact, they delayed the kickoff of this game 45 minutes. Ryan Sands, number 90, will kick off for Rutgers. Jared Payton and Andre Johnson stand back deep to receive for the Hurricanes. And the Big East opener for both schools underway. They try to pooch kick it down the near sideline, and it hits. And Miami will fall on a DJ Williams at the 20-yard line. Well, nearly a mental error by the Hurricanes. It looks like Chris Campbell, the up back on that side, went upfield to block, John. If it's close to the 20-yard line, that up back has got to make a play on the ball. Yeah, it looked like Chris Campbell was pointing to someone to catch the football. He should have went over and fair caught the football himself. Luckily, Miami gets unscathed out of there, and Ken Dorsey will lead the attack. You see, last week, 20-27 for 344 and three touchdowns. An alert play by D.J. Williams to fall on the football. Miami will start first and 10 from their 20. Davenport and Portis set behind Ken Dorsey. Pitch to Portis. Looking for some room, and he'll be fortunate to get back to the line of scrimmage. He doesn't lose football, and Ken Dorsey pounces on it back at the 10-yard line. Ryan Bender forcing the fumble from Clinton Portis, and that'll be a loss of 10. Just a simple cosplay, Frank, to the wide side, but Rutgers had eight, nine people up at the line of scrimmage, nowhere to go. You see Joaquin Gonzalez trying to get some blocking to the outside, Najee Davenport, then the ball is stripped. Looked like number six on the play for Rutgers. Peggy, the defensive end, strips the football, and luckily Ken Dorsey falls on it for the Canes. Hurricane split the tight end, Shockey out wide to the right on this second and 20. Dorsey's first throw, complete to Shockey, and he is dragged down after a gain of eight yards. Number four, Nate Colon making the play for Rutgers. It'll bring up third and 12. Here's the starting lineup for the Miami Hurricanes offensively. It'll be Dorsey, Davenport, and Fortis in the backfield. The wide receivers, Beard and Johnson. Kevin Beard with three catches in his debut last week. And the offensive line, Martin Bibla had an outstanding game against Penn State. It's third and almost 12 for Miami. Full out blitz, Frank. Everybody at the line of scrimmage for Rutgers. Everybody within three yards of the line, and here they come. Dorsey flips it out, complete to Epic Sands. He gets away at the 30. Epic Sands to the 40, and right down near midfield. Number 29, Ben Martin finally made the tackle, but that is a first down for the Hurricanes at their own 49-yard line. We talked about at the beginning that Greg Schiano loves the blitz, and that's what Ken Dorsey's doing right now. He's saying, come on, bring the blitz. That gives me one-on-one -on -one downfield. I'll pick and choose the target I want. That time, he picks number seven. Ethnic Sands, a great move to the inside. Ken Dorsey just retreating in the back. We watch his stop and go move right there on number 21, the defensive back, Dwayne Thompson. And then from behind, trying to get the ball stripped, does a nice job, Ethnic Sands, protecting the football. Gain was 31 yards. First and 10, Miami. Moving along the front, Davenport with the handoff, busts through to the Rutgers 45-yard line. Torrance Hedgy, number six, making the tackle with the penalty flag down. Our referee today is John Smith, and in my opinion, he's the best the Big East has. It's an offside on Rutgers. The gain was about six, so I'm sure Miami will take the penalty and save the down. Billy Tulloch, number 96, jumped into the neutral zone. Greg Schiano, the defensive uh, coordinator for Miami the past couple years, now the head man at Rutgers, and here's how the Rutgers defense lines up. Greg Pismuka, and that is a mouthful, one of the starters, and Alfred Peterson, the true freshman from Miami, Carroll City, getting a start. Brian Bender is their best linebacker. And the defensive backs led by Sean Seabrooks, who had an interception return for a touchdown in the opener against the University of Buffalo. Frank, I see you got Pismuka right out of the way earlier. Got to get that out of the way. <laughs> get it right the first time, and then it's okay. And his brother Marty is a starting offensive That's lineman right. for Rutgers. I'll take him on the offensive side. So Miami accepts the penalty. It'll be first and five from the Rutgers 46. So Miami avoiding disaster on their first play from scrimmage as Dorsey pounced on the Fortis fumble. On a first and five, this is Davenport to the 45, keeps his balance and pushed out of bounds near the 41-yard line. Alfred Peterson and Brandon Haw, number 24, combining on the tackle. 
It's a pickup of four. It'll bring up second and one. And that's a name we hope to say a little bit more as the evening progresses is Nigel Davenport. Only two touches last week against Penn State, one rushing and one catching. He ended up getting a receiving touchdown, but Nigel is a big part of this offense for Miami. As goes Nigel Davenport, really, and Ken Dorsey, so goes this Miami offense. And Nigel had a great game blocking against Penn State on lead plays for Clinton Fortis. On second and one from the Rutgers 42. Beard in motion toward the formation. They give to Portis. Portis busting through. Clinton Portis running hard down to the 32-yard line. Picks up a Miami first down. Brian Bender, number 42, making the tackle, but not before. Clinton Portis picked up 11 yards. Joaquin Gonzalez a little slow to get up. Back at the Rutgers 43-yard line. Here's another look at Portis. Gaping hole on the right side. And as you said, Joaquin Gonzalez a little slow getting up, but he was one of the major contributors to providing Portis with that hole on the right side. Bibla, Romberg, actually Haji Razuli on the pool, number 74, the left guard, also in on that. You see last week Clinton Portis, 17 rushes for 164, but that's a big loss. Joaquin Gonzalez walking off the sideline. Hopefully he'll be able to return this series for the Canes. They were pointing toward Joaquin's right shoulder, so the training staff will check out Gonzalez, number 60. Vernon Carey checks in at right tackle for Miami, the big 6'5", 346-pounder from Miami Northwestern High School. First down from the Rutgers 31. 12.26 left to go in a scoreless first quarter. Dorsey with play action. Under some pressure. Going to the corner and too far out of the reach of Andre Johnson, who was single covered by Brandon Hall. And Ken Dorsey was knocked down after the throw. We've got a flag at the 34-yard line of Miami. Ken maybe had to let that football go a little bit earlier than he would have liked to let it go. Personal foul on Miami is the indication from John Smith. Very unusual on a pass play of a personal foul against the offense somewhere in the area of the pocket. Take a look at Bryant McKinney at left tackle. See if he does anything untoward here. Well, he went out of the picture, so it's a little bit difficult to tell. Tough to tell, but number oh, six. Oh, there it was. He poked, he poked, kind of poked him in the back of the head. And that might have been Sherko, 74, Sherko Haji Rasuli. Yeah, you see everybody pointing in white shirts to number 74, Haji Rasuli. That might have been the infraction. It's going to cost the Hurricanes 15 yards and some field position. I'll bring it back to the Rutgers 46 yard line and make it a first and 25. Again. Those are the kind of penalties that Miami wants to avoid. The, the, that's really kind of a silly penalty. Of course, Miami penalized double digits last week. Some of those were the typical first game. They'll say second down, it was a dead ball foul. So make it second and 25. So it was after the ball fell incomplete when the flag was thrown. So a second and 25 for Miami. 12-18 left to go first quarter. Canes from the Rutgers 46. Four-man rush. Dorsey with plenty of time. Again going for Andre Johnson and just overthrows him at the 12-yard line. That time Johnson bracketed in double coverage by Haw 24 and Seabrooks 23, but he still had a step. He still had a couple steps. That time Ken Dorsey with nice protection just missed him on the corner route. That was the pass. The play before that Torrance Hagee came in and gave him pressure. He let it go a little bit earlier than he wanted to. That time, standing tall in the pocket, just misses the young receiver on the corner route. So we'll see if the penalty on Sherko Haji Rasuli costs Miami. They were in good field position at the 31-yard line. It's now a third and 25 from the Rutgers 46. And it's man coverage again, Frank, across the board. Dorsey, a quick throw out complete to Kevin Beer. They're trying to get away, and he'll go down at the 41-yard line, a gain of only five. Number 41, Gary Brackett, the middle linebacker, came out to make the play for Rutgers, and the Canes will send their punt team onto the field. Well, helped by that penalty on the personal foul against Miami's offense. Tony Berry coming up, number two, the cornerback on that play. You see Greg Schiano playing it safe on the Rutgers sideline, but they did a nice job disguising man coverage that time. The snap of the ball, they came out in zone, and were right there to stop the Canes on third down. Freddie Capshaw will kick it away for Miami. Del Rico Fletcher stands back at the 10-yard line. Capshaw hangs this one high, going for the far sideline, and it will reach the end zone for a touchback. 11 minutes and 30 seconds left to go first quarter. Miami stalling on their first possession, and Rutgers will take over first and 10 at their 20-yard line. Frank on the Miami sideline still working on Joaquin Gonzalez. It looks like he's up now instead of sitting down. But Greg Schiano, a nice first series. He gambled on third down and really was hurt by a big play. But then a penalty again against Miami gives Rutgers the football back. First and 10 at their own 20-yard line. 
Ryan Cubitt, the true freshman quarterback, leading Rutgers onto the field. First and 10 from the 20 yard line. There's Cubitt's numbers from the opener against Buffalo. He also threw two interceptions. Rutgers stacking four receivers to the right side. Flip out complete to LJ Smith, the tight end, and he'll get up to the 31 yard line for a first down before Chris Campbell made the tackle. Let's take a look at the lineups for Rutgers and a very unusual formation there as they split four guys out to the right side of the formation. It's the true freshman Cubitt with Dennis Thomas and Seth Stanton, the blocking fullback. Wide receivers Aaron Martin had five catches in the opener against Buffalo. And Marty Pismuka in a young offensive line, only one senior, Mike Esposito. And now a tricky formation by Rutgers. Cubitt throwing incomplete. He was going for his tight end, uh, rather Stringer, the wide receiver, and a penalty flag on number 95 of Miami, Jerome McDougal. They may get him for holding. This well, is Greg good, throwing is, the book at I Miami tell you what, right this now. is a good job by Rutgers because they can't line up man-to-man 11-on-11 -man and beat Miami for four quarters. They may be able to get away with this in the first quarter in the beginning of the game to try different formations. You see everybody to the left side of the line of scrimmage, actually a, a nice swing play to the right, and they're calling for the flag. It looked like it was pass interference. Well, they call it pass interference rather than holding, so it's a 10-yard penalty and a first down for Rutgers at their own 41-yard line. The intended receiver was David Stringer, number 86. Eventually, they're going to have to line up and face Miami head-on, but this is a good job by Shiano and his, and his staff on both sides of the football field, both sides of the line of scrimmage. Try to do something different and confuse Miami. Dennis Thomas, the lone running back behind Cubitt. The pitch to Thomas. Looking for running room. Chris Campbell grabs him around the ankles. Loose football. Miami says they have it. We'll wait for the officials. And it is Miami football. Chris Campbell forced it. And Miami comes up with it. It looked like Ed Reed, number 20, the All-American, came up with the football. You called it. Chris Campbell looked like number 48 out of that linebacker spot. The strong side forces the fumble. And Miami fans have something to cheer about. A big turnover by the defense. You see, the running back right there loses the football as he goes to the ground. DJ Williams also around the pile. I'm not sure who got it. Everybody's grabbing for it at the end, but Miami does have it. You see the official right there signaling for that defense. Ed Reed, number 20, came up with the recovery. He came away from the pile. So Miami, with the turnover, has it first and 10 at the Rutgers 40. 11 minutes to go first quarter. We are scoreless at the Orange Bowl. Dorsey checking off at the line of scrimmage. Pump fake. Wide Going open. Deep down the sideline. Andre Johnson, touchdown Miami. A 40-yard strike from Ken Dorsey to Andre Johnson as he beat Tony Berry and the Canes lead it 6 to nothing. Ken Dorsey was licking his chops. He audible at the line of scrimmage to a pump and go. He's the most excited guy on the football field. He looked to the wide side first, and when he came back to the short side, Nobody was around the fresh, the, the young wide receiver, number five, Andre Johnson, the sophomore. You see Dorsey couldn't believe his eyes when he saw him almost 10 yards beyond the cornerback. And Andre Johnson, that's probably the easiest touchdown he'll have all season long. Todd Seavers on to attempt the conversion out of Freddie Capshaw's hold. It is up and it is good. 10 minutes, 53 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Miami leads it over Rutgers by a score of 7-0 as Andre Johnson picks up his first touchdown of the year, the second of his career. We'll be right back on Fox Sportsnet after this. 10 minutes, 53 seconds left to go first quarter. Miami jumping out to a 7-0 lead over Rutgers. The Canes with a fumble recovery at the Rutgers 40-yard line. It took just one play for Ken Dorsey to hit Andre Johnson for the touchdown. It took only five seconds. Yeah, Edward Reed providing the entertainment on defense and offense. Ken Dorsey to Andre Johnson, making it look easy for the 7-0 score. Todd Sievers will kick it off. Dennis Thomas and Nate Jones back to receive for Rutgers. And just a light drizzle falling now. It was pouring about an hour before game time. The kickoff delayed about 45 minutes. Low line drive kick. That's Nate Jones at his six. Looking for some room, and he ran into Daryl McClover, number 49, and then the rest of the Canes finished him off. Darrell McClover, number 49, with the initial hit, and Rutgers will start first and 10 from their 21. William Joseph, one of the coaches' players of the game from the Penn State game, along with Andrew Williams, in a front four that had a terrific game against Penn State. DJ Williams led the Canes with 10 tackles last week out of his linebacker spot, and of course the secondary led by the All-American, Edward Reed, who already has a fumble recovery in this game. So we'll see what Rutgers offensive coordinator Bill Cubitt has up his sleeve on this possession. 
They threw some strange formations at Miami in their first time out. There's a give to the tailback, and he goes down for no gain. Number 43, Marcus Jones in a tailback. He got nothing. Jonathan Billman, number 51 in there for Miami. The true sophomore middle linebacker with big shoes to fill, replacing the great Dan Morgan. And Jonathan had a very solid game last week against Penn State. He's a solid player. Anytime Dan Morgan last year was nicked up, Jonathan Vilma came into the football game and provided some instant leadership, did a nice job. And on that play, Chris Campbell, credit him for taking on the block of the fullback in the, in the backfield of Rutgers. Second and 10 for Rutgers. Cubic pitches to Jones, fake reverse. Jones still has the football, and D.J. Williams brings him down for a loss of three. A nice job by Mike Rump to seal off the outside, letting D.J. Williams make the tackle. You said it, Frank. Monk. Mike Rump held his own on the outside and waited for help from the inside. But number 17, D.J. Williams runs this thing down after the fake reverse. Watch D.J. keep his feet. Mike Rump on the outside. A nice one-two tandem for the defense. Watch him spread it out on the line of scrimmage. The defensive end does a nice job. They fake the reverse, almost fake us out, but they don't fake out 17 and eight, Williams and Rump. Spread formation, five receivers out for Rutgers and penalty flags fly from both the referee John Smith and the linesman on the far side of the field. And that's an illegal substitution penalty. You heard it, breaking the huddle with 12 men, you cannot do that. That'll cost Rutgers five, making a third and 12, a third and 17. There is Greg Schiano. He knows he's in for a rough day today. He knows the talent on this Miami team. He said earlier in the week, you know, I was looking forward to coaching guys like Jerome McDougall and Andrew Williams, but I made my choice. Now I got to coach against them. Rutgers spreads five wide receivers out in a shotgun formation with Cubit as the quarterback. Cubit. Little dump off underneath, complete to Del Rico Fletcher, but Jonathan Vilma right there, and that's a, a gain of only a yard on a third and 17 play. And Frank, it looked like it was going to be something more of a big play for Rutgers on that play, but the speed, the team speed of the University of Miami, especially on defenses, is overwhelming for some of these teams going against them. Jonathan Vilma comes from the outside, now that's a linebacker, a middle linebacker, moving like a defensive back. Just a great play by the sophomore linebacker. Mike Barr will stand back on his goal line. Kevin Beard will be in to return the punt for Miami. Ryan Neal is the long snapper. High snap. Barr will not get it off. Marquise Fitzgerald knocks him down, but hold on. There's a penalty flag on the far side of the field. They might not have got the playoff in time, which would be a bad break for Miami. Yeah, and I think they're going to make them do it all over again, unfortunately for Miami. So that's a bad break for Miami because they were going to have the ball at the two-yard line. So instead, they'll march it back to the 11. You watch the high snap from Neal, and Barr had nowhere to go with this thing. Oh, he was trapped right at the two-yard line, as you said, Frank. Unfortunately for Miami, there was a time count violation. So they'll do it again. Barr standing in his end zone. Again, a high snap. He picks up the loose ball, There's and Mike Barr there. might have a first down. There goes Barr down the sideline. Kevin Beard tripped him up, and it's good. he's going to have a Rutgers first down at the 32-yard line. Boy, how's that for a sequence of events? Miami has the ball at the two, and they have him in the end zone. Instead, it's a Rutgers first down at the 32-yard line. Great athletic play from Mike Barr. Everybody from Miami special team unit that time was going away from Mike Barr. Watch the screen, the left side, besides one guy on the outside that doesn't get it done there, the contained guy. Everybody's running away from number 13, Mike Barr, down the middle of the field. You see someone come up at the last second. It looked like number nine, Kevin Beard, who was the punt returner on the play, trying to make the play to stop the punter, but a, a nice athletic play that time by number 13, Mike Barr, the punter. Well, the breaks definitely did not go the Canes' way on those last two plays. Rutgers on a first down. Cubit hands it to Smith, and he'll go down, rather, Marcus Jones, number 43. He'll go down up at the 36-yard line. William Joseph, number 94, along with D.J. Williams, 17, on the tackle. Jones picked up four. It'll be second and six, 7.55 left to go here in the first quarter. Miami leading seven to nothing. Well, I've never seen anything like that, John. 
they mess up two punts in a row and they wind up with a first down. Two horrible snaps and with the athleticism of Barr keeps Rutgers in possession of the football. On second and six, Cubit out of the shotgun. Big pressure from Matt Walters forces the incompletion as Rutgers was trying to set up a screen to Del Rico Fletcher. But Matt Walters, number 91, totally messed up the timing. Yeah, a screen play, a little hitch play to the inside by Rutgers offense that time. Probably your worst nightmare as a quarterback, seeing big number 91 bearing down at you at 6'5", 262, the junior defensive tackle. Had a nice game last week against Penn State. Six total tackles, two tackles for a loss. At that time, all over Ryan Cupid, the quarterback. Well, Rutgers sends three wide receivers into the formation. Cubit out of the shotgun on a third and six. And whistles stop the play before it starts. Could probably, be another delay a game, Frank. Probably a good thing because Cubit wasn't ready for the snap. And somebody called a Rutgers timeout. Might have been the coaches or somebody on the sideline. And we have 734 left to go first quarter. I'm still stunned by the fact that they could mess up two punt plays and come away with a first down. Well, Greg Schiano and staff could sit on the sidelines or stand on the sidelines and feel very fortunate to be in this situation, only down seven points with 734 left to go in the first quarter. It'll be third and six when we come back. We'll take a timeout, 734 left to go first quarter. Miami leads it over Rutgers, seven to nothing. Back at the Orange Bowl, Frank Fort and John Congemi, 734 left to go first quarter. Miami leading Rutgers, seven to nothing. It's a third and six for Rutgers. Cubit out of the shotgun. Cubit under some pressure, throws over the middle and incomplete. Edward Reed was the nearest guy to it. And with just a four-man rush, Miami got pressure on Cubit. Terrific pressure by the front four of Miami's defense. Cubit have no, having nowhere to throw the football. This time the punting unit will come back onto the field for Rutgers and Miami hopefully gonna get some pressure on the punter. Well, they had two bad snaps on their last punt try, but somehow Mike Barr ran for a first down. Kevin Beard back to receive for Miami. Barr averaged 47.3 yards on six punts against Buffalo. This time still a bit of a high snap, and Barr got it away. Pretty good kick. This is Beard at his 18. Takes it straight up the field, and he'll get back to the 28-yard line where Miami will start first and 10. Credit the special teams tackle to Rutgers number 32, Nate Jones, a backup defensive back. And this will be Miami's third possession of the day. The series history between Miami and Rutgers is lopsided. In terms of Miami, they lead eight games to none. They've scored 51 or more in the last four meetings. And of course, last year, a 64 to six whacking up in New Brunswick. And unfortunately, Frank, for the Miami offense, they break the huddle without number th uh, 73, Joaquin Gonzalez, the starting right tackle. Looks like Vernon Carey in uh, for his second series. Joaquin went out with an injured right shoulder the last time Miami had the football. On first down, a fake to Portis. Dorsey under pressure. He goes deep, Andre Johnson intercepted by Brandon Hall. Dorsey under pressure, was forced to underthrow the ball. Torrance Hedgie, number six, had the pressure, and Dorsey suffers his second interception of the season. That, John, was strictly due to the pressure. Ken could not step into that throw like he wanted to. Well, it's pressure, and I also think it's also a young wide receiver not going for the football. Andre Johnson drifts up the football field. Take a look, Frank. He doesn't have a chance to get back to try to prevent the interception, but as you said, the pressure was the biggest key on that. Ken Dorsey had no chance to step into the throw, couldn't get any velocity on the football, and you think Andre Johnson, he might have been fooled because he saw the ball coming to him, didn't think the, the defender below him would have a chance on the play because he had beaten him already, but great pressure by the Rutgers front seven on Ken Dorsey. I guarantee he's on the phone with Curtis Johnson, the wide receivers coach, who's telling Andre exactly the same thing. You gotta go fight for the football. First and 10, Rutgers from their 32 out of the shotgun. Cubit wants to throw down the sideline and overthrows incomplete and penalty flags come out on Philip Buchanan. Aaron Martin was the intended receiver. And I'm not sure if that was catchable. There was some contact between Buchanan on the sideline of Miami, but I'm not sure that ball landed in bounds or was catchable. Take another look, the ball clearly overthrown, but there was contact probably five to seven yards before uh, the infraction occurred. Right there, you see the contact around the 50-yard line, ball landing a good five to seven yards beyond the wide receiver there, Aaron Martin, number 82. 
So the penalty will move it up. 15 yard penalty. And that will move it to the 47 of Rutgers. So again, penalties kind of dogging the Hurricanes in this game. We took a big chunk out of them last week, Frank. Double digit uh, penalties. And some of those, Larry Coker had said that we can accept those because they're working penalties. They were fighting penalties. They weren't stupid penalties. But today, so far, a couple bonehead plays. Cuban again going deep. And that ball broken up by Edward Reed. Coming over to help out his cornerback, Mike Ruff. Trez Moses was the intended receiver. There you see an example of one of the finest defensive backs in the country, Ed Reed, coming off the hash. Watch him get in right here and does a great job of extending his right arm to the receiver and breaks it up. Edward Reed is a strong man coming from that hash. He brings a lot of thump from the middle of the football field. Second and 10, Cuban with some time. Throwing down the sideline and overthrowing, incomplete. Number 80, the intended receiver was Jerry Andre, the freshman out of Hialeah, Miami Lakes. And again, we have flags down. We might have a roughing the passer. Might be holding as well, Frank. It looked like a lot of the Hurricanes up front were complaining. He might have a, a, a penalty on both sides of the football here. Well, the flag, there's two flags down, one from the linesman, one from the referee, John Smith. Holding against the offense. Personal foul. Rough in the pass against the defense. Penalties all set. Still second down. Let's take another look and see who the guilty party was. See Cuba trying to throw the football uh, that's down border, the field. That's pretty borderline. And job. I don't know, Andre Williams was in the air when he threw the football. It looked like it was maybe one or one and a half steps. And you're right, Frank, if you get a shot like that, you're going to take it as a defensive lineman. That was pretty borderline. That's Andrew an Williams, 99, was the player. It's an aggressive play that you can live with if you're the coach of Miami right now. So they'll replay second and 10. Cubit on the rollout. Fires complete to Aaron Martin. Martin got away. And he'll get down to the Miami 45 yard line. Chris Campbell, number 48, on the tackle. The pickup was seven. It'll be third and three. Aaron Martin led all receivers, Rutgers receivers, last week against Buffalo. Five catches for 131 yards in one touchdown. You see his numbers there last week, an average of 26.2. So he's the big play guy in this Rutgers offense. A nice play, eluding the tackle of DJ Williams on the outside and getting a couple more yards. It'll bring up third and three for the Scarlet Knights. Four wide receivers in for Rutgers and a penalty flag thrown. I think they got too many guys on the field. Yeah. They, I've counted five, five receivers <laughs> and a running back. There's That's three, too many. There's three this way, two that way, and two guys in the backfield. And, and Greg's not happy about it. That's the second such penalty on Rutgers. And, uh, well, if you're a lip reader, I don't need to go any further than that. It's not let's go, let's do a good job on the sidelines right now for Greg Schiano. And when they broke the huddle, I thought it looked funny because they had five wide receivers and a running back. And only five guys are eligible. So already nine penalties on both teams. And this first quarter still has 6.13 to go. You know, not only a sloppy day and a sloppy field, but a sloppy football game so far by both, both sides of the ball, offensively and defensively. But the Hurricanes hanging tough to the 7-0 lead with a third down and eight now for the Rutgers offense. Three wide receivers in, in the shotgun formation. Cubit called timeout before the snap. The center snapped it anyway. Brian Borer made the snap. But Cubit spends another timeout. That is the second timeout that Rutgers has spent. You're right, John. This is a, a sloppy day, and so far a bit of a sloppy game. We'll take a timeout. 5.52 left to go first quarter. Miami leads Rutgers 7-0. Coach Larry Coker and the Hurricanes are ready to rewrite the history books as they take on the Washington Huskies here on Fox Sports Net on Sunday. The Canes are looking for their first ever win against the Huskies, and there's no better venue for that than in the Orange Bowl. Don't miss the action Sunday at 5 o'clock here on Fox Sports Net. That'll be a big game for the Canes. Right now, they still have to take care of Rutgers. They lead it 7 0 in what has been uh, kind of a sloppy game. Bad weather before the kickoff. It's cleared up now and does not appear to be raining at all except for a very, very light drizzle. This is a third and eight for Rutgers from midfield. Miami fumbled on the first play of the game. They got it back. Rutgers fumbled and Miami turned that into a touchdown on one offensive play and Ken Dorsey threw an interception on Miami's last possession on a ball he underthrew under some pressure. And Frank, really Rutgers uh, 
have, have done a good job using their timeouts because they used one on a bad snap for a punt that would have given Miami great field position and that last third down attempt would have definitely turned into a sack by the Miami defense. So the young freshman quarterback, Ryan Cubitt, now facing a third and eight right around midfield with 5.52 left to go in this first quarter. Already a bunch of flags in this game. Our referee, John Smith, will restart play momentarily. It'll be a third and eight for Rutgers. Hurricanes guilty of 14 penalties against Penn State for 120 yards. And that did not make Larry Coker happy. You know, that's something you're going to have a young football team going on the road, uh, 109,000 people, and they, they played a very good football game. And listening to his comments during the week, a lot of those penalties were aggressive penalties that people were going downfield, receivers blocking, getting called for holding and things like that that he'll accept, but he won't accept the offsides or delay of game or uh, a personal foul penalty when it takes the uh, offense off the field or the defense keeping them on the field. So that's something Miami on both sides of the football has to work through. Joaquin Gonzalez, the right tackle for the Canes in the locker room, having his right shoulder examined. There is no prognosis at this time. There was a problem with the clock. They were waiting for it to get fixed. I mean, already in this game, Miami's had a personal foul on their left guard, pass blocking. And they've had a roughing the passer that was negated by a holding penalty. Third and eight. Cubit out of the shotgun. Four-man rush for the Canes. Cubit with time, down the middle, and that ball is broken up by both Edward Reed and James Lewis, numbers 20 and 23. The safeties combining to break that play up. Three against one for Miami down the middle of the football field. As you said, 23-20, and another defensive player, maybe 25, Al Marshall in on the play, but a nice job by the Hurricane defense. A bad place to throw the football and leave some loft on it is down the middle of the football field. Looking for Aaron Martin, but three Hurricanes right there good job there by lewis and reed as well as al marshall so mike barr in again to punt kevin beard stands back at the hurricane 10. good snap this time miami trying to set up a return Barr with a nice high kick heading toward the end zone and into the end zone for a touchback miami will start first and 10 at their 20 yard line the last delay we had apparently there were some fans in the stands blowing some whistles and they made a public address announcement to please cease and desist so Miami will take over first and 10 at their 20 yard line. Three possessions so far for the Canes. First one, a couple of first downs and then a punt. A touchdown on the second possession and a turnover, an interception on their third possession. On first and 10 from the 20. Kevin Beard and Andre Johnson, the wide receivers. Portis and Davenport behind Dorsey in the eye. Beard in motion. Give us to Portis. Portis squeezes out about four yards on a first down play. Number 41, Gary Brackett coming up for the tackle, the middle linebacker for Rutgers. That'll be second and six. John, a big point Larry Coker made during the week was against Penn State, there were only two plays for a loss for the Miami offense, only two negative plays. And he mentioned Clinton Portis. He said he took what was there. If there was a small crease, he put his head down and got what he could. They want to avoid the minus one, the minus two, the minus three on a first down. Consistency is the key for Clinton Portis. Second and six for the Canes. Again, Portis with the handoff. Bounces it outside. And Portis puts his head down and gets close to a first down at the 30-yard line. Looks like he's going to have it. And a late flag again coming down. I think they're going to call this on Martin Bibla, possibly. The right guard, number 65, maybe blocking as the play or after the whistle around the football carrier looked like he was right around Clinton Portis and Bibla is talking to one of the officials Portis did pick up a first down so if this is a dead ball foul it's going to be a first down and 25 for Miami I'll tell you what, the Hurricanes are playing aggressive football, but they're not necessarily playing smart football, although I would, I would venture to say that Larry Coker, when he looks at the tape, is going to say some of these things are pretty borderline. Yeah, you know, the, uh, in the personal foul on the defense was a little borderline. I'm not sure if that was a penalty. It looked like Martin Bibla was still going into his block as Clinton Portis really 
fell to the ground, so I'm not sure if uh, if that play or that foul was warranted, but we'll see what happens now with Miami in a hole. First and 25. 445 left to go first quarter. Give us to Portis. Portis picks his way through. Sean Seabrooks makes the tackle after a gain of five at the 20-yard line. Nate Cologne, number four, helping out for the Rutgers defense. They'll bring up a second and 20 for Miami. Clinton Portis with a big week last week, averaging 9.6 yards per rush. He had a touchdown called back on a holding penalty. And you like the way he's running the football right now, Frank. He's going very hard through the tackles. His shoulder pads facing north and south, and he's following Nigel Davenport. That's a smart thing to do. Second and 20 for the Canes. Dorsey, complete over the middle to Andre Johnson, gets away at the 35. There goes Andre Johnson. He's gone. He's turning on the Jets. Chased by Nick Cologne, and Cologne will run him down inside the Rutgers 20-yard line. I want to correct myself. I said second and 20 because it was a dead ball foul. It was a second and five. So the penalty, after the penalty, it was a first and 10 rather than a first and 25. In any case, a big play down to Andre Johnson inside the Rutgers 20-yard line. They're going to spot it at the 16. Well, making a small play into a huge play for the offense. Andre Johnson, after taking the, just a little slant, almost a delay outside, a split-end delay coming down the line. Nobody there when he catches the football. Man-to-man -man coverage. He makes two defenders miss, two Rutgers defenders. Now it's a foot race, and you think he's going to win it, but Nate Cologne gets on his horse and drags down the sophomore wide receiver, Andre Johnson, after a huge game. 64 yards on the pass completion. Ethnic Sands in motion from the Rutgers 16. Give us to Portis. Portis to the 10 yard line. Picked up six on a first down. Ben Martin, number 28, and number 29 rather, making the tackle. Ben, the son of the former great New York Giant defensive end, George Martin. He has two sons on this team. Aaron Martin, the wide receiver, and Ben Martin, the safety. Well, so far, Frank, for Larry Coker's offense, it's been big plays to get the the field really cut in half, and now Miami's knocking at the door again. 3.03 left to go in this first quarter. Miami at the 10 yard line. Second and four for the Hurricanes. Give to Portis. Nice hole. Portis to the five. And he'll be very close to a first down. Number 29, Ben Martin again in on the tackle for Rutgers. We'll see where they spot it, just inside the six-yard line, and they may have to measure. That time, Frank, if Martin Bibla would have headed up into the hole instead of going sideways, he'd have been in front of the ball carrier Portis that time, would have provided him with that one block he needed to get into the end zone. Still has the first down on a tough run inside the tackles, but a good job by Clinton Portis in that offensive line, winning the battle at the line of scrimmage. First and goal from the six, Robert Williams, number 80, checking in for a double tight end and a penalty flag back in the corner of the end zone. They may have 13 people on the field again, Rutgers. I'm not sure. Dead ball. Dead ball. Illegal substitution. Defense. 12 That's minutes. Their third. Defensive huddle. Penalties half the distance to the goal. It remains first and goal. That's their third illegal substitution penalty here in the first quarter. I mean, it's a good idea to try and play <laughs> with 12 guys against Miami, but if you get caught, uh, that's a different you story. You figure you're wearing white. Just stand close together. No one will know. Well, Miami loading up now with tight ends. David Williams, number 82. The redshirt freshman from Miami Northwestern checks in in a triple tight end set. Williams, David Williams, Robert Williams, and Jeremy Shockey all in the game as tight ends. That's Robert Williams in motion. They'll give it to Davenport. Davenport, end zone, touchdown, Hurricanes. It's Najee all day, every day for a hurricane touchdown with 2-12 left in the first quarter. They lead it 13 to nothing. Great job by this offensive line. Once they got to the 10-yard line, they really took over. A nice run to play before by Clinton Portis this time. Najee Davenport with his first rushing touchdown of this season. Watch him just with authority. He, this time, uh, re roll reversal. Clinton Portis provides the block up front for Najee Davenport, and the Canes make it 13 to nothing. Seavers on for the conversion attempt. And it is good out of Freddie Capshaw's hold and Chris Harvey's snap. And with 2.12 left to go in the first quarter, Najee Davenport, the senior out of Miami Central High, with the Canes' first rushing touchdown of the season. They had four touchdowns through the air, and we'll take another look as they went triple tight end, John. Yeah, as many tight ends as Miami has on the right side, Najee will not be denied. That big frame gets into the end zone. Not many times you're going to stop the 242-pound senior, 6'2". Just a tough run inside the tackles. Nigel in, as you said, for his first rushing touchdown of the season. Of course, he had a touchdown reception against Penn State in the opener. 
And there's a look at the Miami offensive line. And uh, the concern for Joaquin Gonzalez, who has the right shoulder injury. Vernon Carey, number 60, has been in on the last couple of possessions. They're taking the trainers. They're also taking a look at Najee Davenport. He seemed to come off the field okay, but when he sat down, the training staff went over to look at him. We'll see if we can find out what, uh, if any, injury that might be. Todd Sievers will kick it off for Miami. Dennis Thomas and Nathan Jones back to receive for Rutgers. Well, it's still been a penalty-filled first quarter. But Miami has a 14-0 lead. So John Vernon Carey, number 60, the right tackle for the Hurricanes. Uh, I have a feeling he's going to get the rest of the play today, unless they go to the third string uh, right tackle late in the game. But uh, Vernon obviously needs the work. You, you'd hate to see it come at the expense of a Joaquin Gonzalez injury, but big number 60, Vernon Carey, appears like he's going to get a lot of work today in this game against Rutgers with Joaquin suffering a right shoulder injury. You would think, Frank, even if it's not as serious as, as, serious as, as it looked before, they would keep him out just because of the big game next week. And plus, as you said, you have to get some work in at offensive line in true game conditions. Here's Severs to kick it away. Nathan Jones driven back five yards deep in the end zone. He'll take a knee for the touchback. And Todd Severs, who did a superb job on kickoffs against Penn State, again drills one for a touchback. And Rutgers will have it first and 10 at their 20. Two minutes and six seconds left to go. The scoring drive for Miami, seven plays. 80 yards, 3 minutes and 24 seconds. Najee Davenport finishing it off with the short touchdown run. Well, Najee's got a smile on his <laughs> face, so. He's not hurting too much. I can't, I can't think he's hurting that much. Clinton Portis delivering the lead block, as you mentioned, John, the roll reversal on that goal line play. Ken Dorsey today is so far 5 out of 8 for 148 yards, 1 touchdown, 1 interception. Spread formation for Rutgers. Cubic, that is a lateral, complete to Sean Carty. Party up the sideline and a penalty flag down. We may get a hold on Rutgers here. Penalty came from the field judge. The gain was out to the 27 for seven yards. Yeah, it might be a, a hold. Yeah, as you said, Frank, on the perimeter, it looked like on number 85, LJ Smith, the tight end, who was spread out wide to the right-hand side. It might be the, the furthest receiver to the right of your screen, 85 on the hold. See him on the outside right there. I think they call him right there on Mike Rump, the top of your screen, 85, a lot of tugging of the jersey. And uh, the, the, it looked like the line judge on the right side ended up throwing the flag on Smith, 85. L.J. Smith, uh, pretty obvious there, John. The 6'4", 243-pound senior from Highland Park, New Jersey. Caught a touchdown pass in the Rutgers opener, a one-yarder against Buffalo. That actually, that last play will go as a rushing attempt because it was a lateral pass to Sean Carter. The 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul will move it back to the 18-yard line. And it'll be a second and 12, first and 12 for Rutgers. Marquise Fitzgerald, number 27 in the football game as the nickelback for Miami. Four wide receivers spread out for Rutgers. Hubert on a quarterback draw, picks up a few yards, loose football. Are they gonna say he was down? Yes, they said he was down at the 21 yard line. William Joseph, number 94, getting off the bottom of the pile along with Howard Clark, number 45. And this is just a straight quarterback sneak through the gap. Sometimes when a quarterback spreads you out with four receivers, two to each side, Miami only has five people in the box with that nickel package. The quarterback will just take the snap automatically, not tell anyone and go on a quarterback sneak. That time, Rutgers gets the football back on the fumble. Again, the same play, and that was nearly batted down by Cornelius Green. And it is a rushing attempt. It goes out to number eight, Trez Moses, and that will lose four yards. So even though the ball hit the ground, it's live because it is a lateral pass. And good to see number 98, Cornelius Green, in the Miami lineup. He sat out the first game with a turf toe injury against Penn State. He missed most of ball practice. Let's take another look, John. Looks like a bobbled snap, Frank, to begin with. And then the freshman, Cuba, tries to get it outside. As you said, a good heads-up play that time by number eight for Rutgers. Trez Moses getting on that football would have been a fumble. Loss was three. It's third and 12 from the 18. Cuba out of the shotgun. Big pressure coming, throws underneath, complete to Simon. Marcus Jones, rather. Jones up to the 30, loose football again. Who's going to pick it up? If Rutgers has it, they're going to have a first down, and they do. And a penalty flag back near the quarterback. Marcus Jones caught the pass, 
and a personal foul against Miami. It looked like they were roughing the quarterback, Ryan Cubitt, the freshman from Rutgers. So the completion out to the 33, the fumble recovered by Rutgers. And they're going to tack on 15. See if we can see it on the replay. A screen all the way. Miami sees it, and that time definitely didn't get a number, but it looked like 99, possibly Andrew Williams on the left side coming in in a personal foul. Defense. The 15 yards will be tagged on to the end of the run. First down. Couldn't get the number. It's either Williams 99 or McDougal 95 coming from the edge on the left side. But definitely, I, and Larry didn't like that. He agrees with the call, but he's disappointed in the defense. They wanted to keep it going, but that's a play you can't make. That's two personal fouls that time on the defense. Yeah, Andrew Williams, if it is 99, of course, they don't identify by number in college football. That would be a second roughing the passer penalty here in the first quarter, which has 27 seconds left to go. Rutgers first down at their 49-yard line. Get to the tailback Jones, and he is drilled by Vince Wilfork for a loss of a yard. Big double wide, Vince Wilfork, number 75, at six foot two, 346 pounds, the freshman from Santa Lucis. And that was in the Dwayne Johnson tradition, laying the smack down. Well, anytime somebody calls you double wide, I think you swell up and take pride in that. And that's what number 75, Vince Wolfork, just did the freshman, 6'2", 346. And that's very generous for, for you, Vince. But he did a great job sliding down the defensive front and providing great leadership in the middle of that defensive front. First quarter is history in the books. At the end of one, the Hurricanes lead Rutgers by a score of 14 to nothing. We'll be right back on Fox Sportsnet right after this. Start of the second quarter here at the Orange Bowl. Miami leads Rutgers 14 to nothing. Frank Fort and John Kajemi with you on Fox Sportsnet. And the Miami Hurricanes are playing as the number one team in the country in the AP poll for the first time since the final poll of the December 1992 season. Miami followed by Florida, Oklahoma, Texas, Nebraska, FSU, Oregon, Tennessee, Virginia Tech, and Georgia Tech. Yeah, and Georgia Tech with a big win today over Na of the Naval Academy. I think it was something in, in the realm of 70 to 7. 70 to 7, that's and, right. And uh, you see Miami leaping over Florida, which kind of makes a lot of Hurricane fans smile, but Oklahoma looks very good. Texas putting on a good victory today against, I believe, NC North Carolina. So back on top, you see right there, Larry Coker wants to stay on top for the remainder of this season. Will be a chore with this tough schedule starting next week at home at the Orange Bowl against Washington. Now I think they're going to get Miami for an illegal substitution as they broke the defensive huddle with more than 11. Howard Clark, number 45, is now in at middle linebacker. There is no penalty on the play. The defense has three seconds to adjust our offensive substitution. The rules are getting more complicated every year, and I'm glad John Smith is explaining it. As I mentioned, in my opinion, John's the best uh, lead referee that the Big East has. So there is no foul. It's a second and 12 for Rutgers as they spread the formation. That's a lateral to Del Rico Fletcher. He's going to throw it deep. Miami has this thing red, and it's going to be an easy interception for the Hurricanes from James Lewis, number 23. Aaron Martin, the intended receiver. Del Rico Fletcher on the double pass, taking the lateral from Sean Carty. But Miami was not fooled. Both Lewis and Reed were back there in coverage. You called it, Frank. Lewis and Reed in perfect position. It was only a matter of time. They went to the well once too often with this play. There had to be something else off of it, a wet football fluttering. And you see right there, number 23, James Lewis, with the interception, but also 20, Ed Reed in perfect position. It looked like the, the uh, referee was going to throw a flag, but call, called it incidental contact when Edward Reed got his legs tangled, tangled with the Rutgers wide receiver. But any result, you get an interception by James Lewis, his first of the season. And the first of his career. Jared Payton and Willis McGahee. Now the backs behind Ken Dorsey. That's McGahee. McGahee, 25-30. Willis McGahee puts his head down and gets up to the 40-yard line. Picks up 18 on the first down carry. Nate Cologne, number four. Sean Seabrooks, 23, making the tackle. Willis McGahee got 17 carries last week against the Penn State Nittany Lions for 77 yards on his first carry against Rutgers. He bust a big game for this Hurricane office. Jared Payton in the backfield. Cutting it way inside, number 65, Martin Bibla. Nice job by the offensive line. A huge hole for Willis McGahee, the freshman running back. First and 10 for the Hurricanes. 
at the 40 yard line. Again, the give to McGahee. This time picks up only a yard. Number 42, Brian Bender jumping over the pile to get a piece of the tackle. That'll bring up second and nine for the Hurricanes. Frank, that gets back to your point when you were talking with Larry Coker. They only had two negative plays offensively, and that time Willis McKay, there was no hole. Bender did a nice job for the Scarlet Knight defense, but what he did was make it a positive play. He gained a yard instead of maybe dancing and running around the backfield and losing a yard or two. Nice positive play, even though it was only a yard gain. That's Nick Sands and Jason Gathers, the wide receivers for Miami on this second and nine. Dorsey. Dumps it off, complete to Jared Payton. He'll get to the 45-yard line. Gary Brackett making the tackle for the Rutgers defense. It's a gain of four. It'll bring up third and five as Jared Payton puts in his third reception of the season. He had two last week for 15 yards against Penn State, a long of nine. See his hometown, Arlington, Illinois. Jared Payton trying to make a contribution to this Canes offensive backfield. One of five sons of former NFL players on this Hurricane team. Miami goes three wide receivers on this third and five from their 45-yard line. Willis McGahee's the only running back. Dorsey against the four-man rush, throws complete to Sands at midfield. Ethnic heads for the Rutgers sideline and goes out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Chased out by Sean Seabrooks, number 23, but Miami moves the chains with 13.04 left to go in this second quarter. Miami leads it 14-0 over Rutgers. Ken Dorsey did an excellent job coming to the line of scrimmage, almost a check with me, Frankie. Goes out and scans the defense, gives the hand signals to the wide receivers, just an in and out move by Ethnic Sands. He comes in, takes one step to the inside, and then pivots hard to the outside. Thompson can't hang with him, 21, and Ethnic Sands moves the chains for the Hurricane offense. Gain was 13. Here's a give to Peyton, the fullback, and he'll pick up three yards. Number 42, Brian Bender making the tackle for the Rutgers defense. Jared Payton's second carry of the season. He had one for three yards against Penn State. He'll bring up second and seven for the Canes. Ball at the Rutgers 39-yard line. Jared Payton, of course, the son of the late great Walter Payton. Redshirted last season to Jarrett, and this year they've moved him to fullback to get him on the field. There's too much depth to tailback. Dorsey checking off at the line on a second and seven. Throws the quick out, complete to Gathers at the 36-yard line. He'll get to the 35, about two and a half yards shy of a first down. Nate Jones, number 32, making the tackle. Held to a gain of four. Another check off by Ken Dorsey at the line of scrimmage to a hitch pattern. Nice catch by the young receiver. Gathers moves the sticks up to a third and probably around three yards, a long three for this hurricane. Miami has to get to uh, halfway between the 37 and 38-yard line as you see Dorsey's numbers. 11.52 to go here in the second quarter. Miami with a 14-0 lead over the Scarlet Knights. Pitch to McGahee. Behind a paint block. McGahee still going and finally tripped down at the 22-yard line. That is a Miami first down. A 13-yard gain for Willis McGahee on a third and three. Bill Hambrick, number 45, credited with the tackle. Yeah, and Tony Berry, number two, with an arm tackle. The defensive back, McGahee busting through. It looked like right there, number two, Tony Berry was able to slow him down just enough to throw him off of his feet. But that was six points. McGahee running really hard in this second quarter. First and ten Hurricanes at the Rutgers 21-yard line. Dorsey with plenty of time. Near corner, Jared Payton, touchdown Hurricanes, as he beat Brian Becker. Now they're calling it incomplete. They said he juggled it on his way out of bounds. Well, that throw was on the money from Dorsey, and apparently Jared Payton was juggling the ball as he crossed the boundary. Yeah, it looked like Jared Payton had the touchdown. He was very concerned about keeping his feet in bounds, and it looked like the bottom half of his body stopped, and he bobbled the football out of bounds. A nice touch pass by Ken Dorsey, a sure touchdown. This ball is right on the money. Jared Payton looked it in, and then it fell right to the to the Orange Bowl grass. Take another look. He clearly beats Bender on the cut on the pass pattern. Hits him almost in the face mask, and any result drops the football. Perfect pass. On second and ten, McGahee picks up about five. Sean Seabrooks, number 23, coming up from safety to make the tackle. And it'll be a third and five upcoming for the Hurricanes. 11 minutes exactly to go in the second quarter, and the clock moving. It'll be a third and five for the Hurricanes. After Rutgers, 16. 
Frank, a good spot here to work your tight end down in the middle of the football field. If I can read Troy Prasic's hand signals, I would watch the tight end on the left-hand side, Jeremy Shockey, number 88. And they have not thrown to Shockey yet in this game. Dorsey on a third and five. Going to the outside, incomplete, intended for Andre Johnson. And that'll bring up a field goal situation. Sean Seabrooks, 23, had the coverage for Rutgers. Well, golden opportunity for the Canes to get in the end zone, a drop pass by Jared Payton, a nice touch pass by Ken Dorsey. That'll bring on the kicking unit. Todd Sievers, who was four for four last week. As you look at Jared Payton, who uh, couldn't handle what appeared to be a short touchdown pass for the Canes. They'll have to settle for a 34-yard field goal try. Chris Harvey to snap. Freddie Capps shot a hole. Good snap. Ball was on its way, and it is hooked wide to the left side. So Todd Sievers misses from 34 yards out. And Rutgers will take over first and 10. 10.25 left to go in the second quarter. Not ideal kicking conditions today. The Hurricanes miss a field goal for the first time this season. We'll take a timeout with 10.25 left to go second quarter. It's Miami 14, Rutgers nothing. 10.25 left to go second quarter. Miami leading Rutgers 14 to nothing. The broadcast rights to tonight's telecast have been granted to Fox Sportsnet Florida by the University of Miami solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any reproduction, transmission, or other use of this program without the express written consent of Fox Sportsnet Florida is prohibited. Gotta love the roll. First bring one it I've back. heard, you gotta bring it back. First, First one, one this I've season that you've right. heard, right? First and 10, Rutgers from their 20-yard line. Hey, let's give some credit to Rutgers. It should be 21-0 with the uh, missed opportunity by the offense of Miami, but they're trying to hang in this football game at 14-0. Rutgers with the fresh, true freshman at quarterback. Rutgers shifting three tight ends to the near side. And a oh, fumble, oh. and Miami's got it. Jonathan Vilma as Marcus Jones could not handle the exchange from the quarterback, Cubitt, and Jonathan Vilma, who forced a fumble last week and was shorted by the Penn State stat crew. They credited McDougal with the forced fumble. It was Vilma last week, and you see the exchange just sloppy and Vilma pouncing on it. I must be the kiss of death. As soon as you give a, a compliment, they've cough it up. Marcus Jones, number 43, Vilma. Jonathan Vilma on the football for Miami gives him great field position to this Miami offense. Jonathan Vilma, nice job all over the football last season. He starts out last week and this week with big plays. 10-21 left to go here in the second quarter. Miami trying to extend a 14-0 lead. First and 10 from the 17. It's Portis and Davenport behind Dorsey. Putting Portis with the football. Portis to the 15 and stretches down to close to the 11-yard line. Picked up almost seven on a first down play. Nice job. Nice running in the backfield, in the Miami backfield by Clinton Portis. That play looked like it was going to be stopped in the Miami backfield, but the strength of Clinton Portis doing a nice job showing his strength in the backfield. Watch this. He makes two people miss behind the line of scrimmage and just carries a, a tackler, would be tackler with him for another four or five yards. Gained six on the play, second and four for Miami. Nate Leonard, number 15, credited with the last tackle. Second and four, Portis again. Puts his head down and gets down close to the six or seven yard line. He'll be very close to a first down. Number 93, Davon Clark, the true freshman, one of the top players in the state of New Jersey last season, in on that last tackle for the Scarlet Knights. We talked about Jeremy Shockey's blocking last week. On that play, just manhandling one of the Scarlet Knight defenders, doing a good job winning the battle at the line of scrimmage on the right side for the Hurricane offense. First and goal for Miami from just outside the six-yard line of Rutgers. 9.32 left to go in the second quarter. Only one wide receiver in the formation for the Canes. That's Jason Gathers, split way out to the left. Robert Williams in motion. Give us the Portis. Cutting back inside, Portis to the four, close to the three-yard line. Torrance Hedgie, number six. Tony Berry, number two, in on the tackle, along with help from Jeremy Campbell, the backup middle linebacker, number 44. Game down to the three. It'll be second and goal. Miami staying on the ground, turning that clock, and really running over Rutgers. Great field position provided by the fumble recovery and Jonathan Vilma. Miami's offensive line and running backs doing the job here in the scoring zone inside the five at the three. Again, it's Jason Gathers as the only wide receiver in for Miami on this second and goal. Again, Williams in motion. Dorsey with a play action. Dorsey with a rollout. End zone. Touchdown. Jeremy Smoke. 
Jeremy Shockey spoke in the end zone today. It's 20 to nothing Miami. Shockey's second touchdown catch of the season. Nice job by Ken Dorsey. He was looking, first of all, to the outside to Robert Williams. Didn't like the matchup. Then decided to look to Jason Gathers. Didn't like that matchup. Watch, he goes progression. One outside, two no. He finds his third receiver trailing. That's his favorite receiver, Jeremy Shockey, for the sliding touchdown. His second touchdown reception of the season. Miami goes up 20 to nothing. And with 8.36 left to go in the second quarter, Todd Seaver's on for his third extra point try of the day, and he knocks it through there. Todd Seavers with his third extra point with 8.36 left to go second quarter. It's Miami 21, Rutgers nothing. Ken Dorsey to Jeremy Shockey for the Canes' third touchdown of the day. Today. Back at the Orange Bowl, 8.36 left to go second quarter. Miami with a 21-0 lead over Rutgers as the Canes cash in on a turnover for the second time today. They did not have to go far, 17 yards in four plays, a minute and 45 off the clock. Jeremy Shockey, a three-yard touchdown reception from Ken Dorsey. Hurricane offense that time making it look easy. They were run, 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 and then they go to the, the easy touchdown pass. Ken Dorsey to Shockey for the score. Todd Seavers now kicking off into a win, which has suddenly picked up from the open end of the Orange Bowl. Dennis Thomas and Nathan Jones back to receive. That's Jones at the one. And he'll go down at the 16-yard line. Marquise Fitzgerald coming through to get a piece of him and trip him up. So again, Rutgers will start inside their 20-yard line. Kane's kickoff coverage team, with the exception of one play against Penn State, a big kickoff return from Larry Johnson of 69 yards, uh, did a great job against Penn State, and here today against Rutgers of keeping them in bad field position. And Rutgers will start with a spread formation. They'll spread out all five eligible receivers. Cubit out of the shotgun. Four-man rush, look out, and he is thrown incomplete over the middle as the big rush put on by Cornelius Green, number 98. Aaron Martin, the intended receiver, but Green gave Cubit virtually no chance. Well, Brian Duffy, the right tackle, and Mike Esposito, the, the right guard, they're looking at each other like, Who's going to pick up the last guy on the line of scrimmage? Nobody wanted Cornelius Green. He had a free run at the freshman quarterback, Ryan Cubitt. You see Cornelius Green there from Houston, Texas. Did a nice job with unblocked coming in was the senior. Now they go to the I formation with Stanton and Thomas behind Cubitt. From the 16-yard line, this is Thomas. And he ran into a pile and loses a yard. Chris Campbell, number 48 there for the Hurricanes, and he had some help from John Vilma, number 51. He definitely had some help there. Vilma in on the tackle, but credit Chris Campbell again for taking on the blocker in the Rutgers backfield. He did a nice job. He'll come out of the game for some defensive back help, but nice job taking on the fullback at the line of scrimmage, and it was really created a stalemate for the rest of his team to come around and rally for the tackle. Campbell last week had three tackles and a pass breakup against Penn State, also one tackle for a loss. It's third and 10 for Rutgers. Four wide receivers to the bottom of the screen. Option pitch, that's Dennis Thomas. And Thomas hit hard by a missile with number 20 on his back. Edward Reed holds that to a gain of three. Couldn't have said it any better. That was a missile from the right hash mark. A nice job by the Miami interior line trying to stretch out that option. As you said, four wide receivers to the short side of the field. But Edward Reed, everybody's All-American coming in and blistering the Rutgers running back. So Mike Barr will come in on a fourth and six to kick it away. Kevin Beard stands back inside the Miami 40. Clock moving with seven minutes, 10 seconds left to go here in the second quarter. Miami up 21-0. Ryan Neal, the long snapper. Barr's kick with the wind, aiming toward the near sideline. Beard has it at his 38. Waiting for some blocking to develop. And doesn't get a whole lot. L.J. Smith will bring him down at the Miami 45-yard line and a late flag. And they might get Kellen Winslow for a block in the back. Personal foul on Miami. And I think the freshman Winslow really very unnecessary because he was 15 yards away from the play as the play was ending. And not only that, the play was over. And you, and you see the coaches on the sidelines trying to tell him, Mark Stoops on the sideline, the defensive back coach saying it's unnecessary, it's 20 yards away from the play. 
That'll cost Miami 15. We have a personal foul. They hit on a receiver. 15 yards, and then a run, first down. So instead of having it at their own 46-yard line, Miami will start at their own 31. You know what? You can live with mistakes in games like this, but next week against Washington, against Florida State, these are the kind of plays that will kill you. Sometimes you play up or you play down to the level of competition, and both teams, really Penn State and Rutgers, Penn State on their in their regard, not what they used to be, and Miami playing a very sloppy and mis mistake-filled football game right now. They still lead 21-0. Pitch to McGahee on first down with room, and he slips as he made his cut at the 33-yard line. Number two, Turney Berry making the tackle for Rutgers, but it was little more than just covering a man who was already down. Yeah, McGahee had some running room off to the left side. A great block on the outside that time provided by Bryant McKinney. He got the corner for him, but McGahee couldn't keep his feet. Joaquin Gonzalez has been diagnosed with a right shoulder strain. He will not return today. So Vernon Carey, as I mentioned before, speculated before, will get a lot of playing time. Ed Wilkins, number 72, now in at left guard in place of Shirko Haji Rasuli. Here's McGahee with the handoff, and he'll try to get about a yard. That's it. To the 33-yard line. Nate Cologne, number four, with a lot of help. Brian Homan, number 49, the backup linebacker, also in on the tackle. It will bring up third and long for the game. Well, that time, the Rutgers uh, defensive front rallying to the football. And as you said, Nate Cologne, number four, coming out of the secondary to be the primary stop on the on the uh, ball play there. Third and eight for the Hurricanes with 5.39, 38 left to go before halftime. On this third and long, three wide receivers in for Miami. Pure man coverage, Frank. Look for a big play here. Kevin Beard resets into the backfield as the Canes' backs protect against the blitz. They pick it up well. Here's the throw. Complete to Ethnic Sands out at the 45-yard line. He'll have a first down. Nate Jones on the coverage. Gain of 12, enough for a first down to the wide receiver, turned quarterback, turned wide receiver, Ethnic Sands. That's right, the versatile Ethnic Sands. Ken Dorsey knew it was full-out blitz, zero coverage, nobody in the secondary in the middle of the football field. He decides to take advantage to the outside, and you see what the young receiver does, Ethnic Sands, the junior, goes up and attacks the football. That's what you have to do to help your quarterback out. In that instance, he really provided a great catch for Ken Dorsey. On first and 10 from the Miami 45. Dorsey with play action. Nobody in the middle. Good protection, wide open. Kevin Beard at the 30. Beard cuts back, still on his feet, and Kevin Beard inside the Rutgers 15-yard line before Bill Holman, number 45, 49, finally made the tackle at the 11-yard line. Frank, I think you play into Miami's hands when you go zero coverage or man coverage because these young wide receivers can get open with space. That time, nobody in the middle of the football field for Kevin Beer. Ken Dorsey can't get the ball quick enough to number nine. Kevin Beer just throws it over the linebacker's outstretched hands, but nobody within 10 yards. A great concentration catch over the middle of the football field. Then a little bake and shake to get by number four, Nate Cologne. The ball's almost at the 10-yard line. Call it the 10. First and goal for the Canes. Gain was 45 yards for Miami. First and 10 from the 11, and Ken Dorsey wants a timeout with four minutes and 25 seconds left to go in this second quarter here at the Orange Bowl. Miami with a 21 to nothing lead. The young wide receivers making plays for the Hurricanes. We'll take a timeout as well with 425 left to go second quarter. Miami threatening and they already lead 21 to nothing. The storm of excitement surrounding the Miami Hurricanes is getting even more intense. This Sunday at five, watch as the Canes take on the Washington Huskies don't miss this matchup right here on Fox Sports Net. That'll be next week as the Hurricanes take on the Huskies. And, of course, uh, quite a history between these two teams, even though they've only played twice. Washington, of course, ending Miami's 58-game home winning streak in the Orange Bowl back in the early 90s. And then, of course, last year winning up at Washington, the only loss suffered by Miami in an otherwise standout season that saw the Canes finish number two in the country, but the one loss cost them a shot at the national title. Got McGahee and Jared Payton in the backfield for the Canes. Miami can get a first down at the one-yard line. McGahee behind a Jared Payton block will pick up two, maybe three yards to the eight-yard line. Sean Seabrook's number 23 coming up from the safety position to make the tackle. And it'll be second and about seven. Frank, what you notice about both of these backs, talking about Willis McGahee as well as Clinton Portis, you can throw Nigel Davenport into that role or into that mix as well. When they get hit, 
they continue to go forward. They never go backwards, and I think their legs are always moving. They're strong, young running backs, and these guys can carry the load in the tough running, especially down by the goal line inside the 10-yard line. Andre Johnson, the only wide receiver. Jeremy Shockey and Robert Williams, two tight ends in. McGay, he again picks up only a yard or two. Number 41, Gary Brackett with the tackle down around the ankles, and it'll be third and still long for Miami. They'll need six yards. Kevin Beard will check in at a wide receiver spot for Miami, replacing a tight end, Robert Williams. Rutgers with a new look this year. The still, still the red helmets, but the white R as opposed to the night symbol that they've used in the past. This is a third and six from the seven yard line. Blitz coming. It's picked up, end zone throw, incomplete shot. He almost had a touchdown, couldn't hang on to it. Fans were screaming for interference from Nate Cologne, but they're not going to get the call. Yeah, timing, Rob. Pure timing by Ken Dorsey. He might have had a little bit more time to hold on to the football than he thought, trying to get Shockey right out of the break. Good coverage that time in tight circumstances by Rutgers. That'll bring on the kicking team in a fourth down. Todd Sievers, who has missed from 34 yards out earlier in this quarter, will now try from 29 yards. Freddie Capshaw with the hold. Seaver's kick is on the way, and it is good. And with three minutes exactly left to go in the second quarter, Miami has stretched their lead to 24 to nothing as Todd Seavers hits his fifth field goal of the season. Maybe a little bit disappointing that the Canes weren't able to punch that one in. Yeah, in any regard, a good drive by Miami taking it down. Big plays down the middle of the football field by Kevin Beard. Almost a touchdown from Dorsey to Shockey, the repeat of the previous touchdown. But they do walk away with three, pushing it to 24 to nothing. So far, Ken Dorsey showing just what he did last week against Penn State. A lot of poise in the pocket, picking out his receivers, spreading the football around. We have eight different Hurricanes catch balls against Penn State. And again, he's spreading it around to a lot of different receivers today. He's not shy about putting the football into the open wide receiver or running back or tight end's arms. They do a good job of spreading the football. Nice hard running, I guess, by all the running backs that have been in the football game. The offensive line has done a nice job. Defensively, they force turnovers, doing exactly what they need to do against the Rutgers team today. Miami already has forced three turnovers in this game, a couple of fumble recoveries and an interception from James Lewis. So they've now turned the ball over to their offense six times in a game and a half. Here's the scoring drive. They went 62 yards in eighth place, three minutes and 45 seconds. Seavers with the 24-yard field goal, the big play, a 45-yard completion from Ken Dorsey to Kevin Beard down to the Rutgers 11-yard line. Dennis Thomas and Nathan Jones going back to receive the kickoff for Rutgers. That's Thomas to the right. Jones to the left of your screen. Hurricanes uh, breaking out the green jerseys in the very first home game this year. Ball fell off the tee, and Todd Seavers will re tee it. And Seavers ready to go. Three minutes left in this first half. It's a 24 0 Miami lead. Receiver's kick. Jones at the one. Oh, is he smacked? Oh, Carl Walker looked like he was shot out of a cannon. Oh, my Lord. We heard excited. that up here. I think you heard me. I'm, I'm excited about that. Carl Walker, what a hit. You can see it coming. Nobody in Rutgers on the special teams were picking up. Carl Walker coming from the left side. Talk about Edward Reed being shot out of a cannon. Carl Walker was a bazooka. He's coming from the left side untouched. And you just can't have that on the special teams. And you see Carl saying, I had him all the way, guys. Nobody got me. Snuck down on special teams. Well, that hit hurt Nathan Jones' girlfriend. <laughs> it shook us up here, Frank. Wow. First and 10 from the 14. Hubert out of the shotgun. Fakes the give. Trying to set up a screen and incomplete to his tight end, Rob Ring. Number 89. Well, Ryan Cubitt, I can guarantee you, has never faced anything like this Miami defense. It's tough for a freshman quarterback to go out, get a victory against Buffalo, and then come down to the Orange Bowl on a bad day with the balls wet. You got a lot of heat on you. You see it results in his numbers, 4 out of 10 for only 35 yards. Uh, kind of growing pains and under duress today, but he'll be better for it next week whoever he faces because he won't see this team speed again probably this season. 
Second and ten. Thomas the only running back. Three step drop for Cubit and throwing incomplete over the head of Jerry Andre, the freshman out of Hialeah Miami Lakes High School. And Greg Schiano came down to South Florida and got six Florida kids in his uh, li latest recruiting class. Andre being one of them. Third and ten for Cubit with 2.43 left to go. So if Miami can go a three and out here on defense, they'll have plenty of time left before halftime to try and extend the lead. Four wide receivers in for Rutgers. And the tight end Smith also spread out wide. Empty backfield on a third and ten. Quarterback draw to Cubit. Got away from Matt Walters, but falls at the 20-yard line at the feet of Al Marshall, number 25. He did get six, but well short of a first down. Trying to spread the Miami defense out. Cubit, the only guy left in that backfield. You see Greg Schiano with the punt team trying to get a good snap and good coverage to keep Miami off the scoreboard. Clock moving with 2.20 left to go. Miami has two timeouts left. Rutgers has one. Philip Buchanan in to return the punt for Miami. And Mike Barr will kick it away. Barr got a good snap and hits a beautiful kick. Driving Buchanan back to the 29. Phillip looking for some room to run. Trying to get outside. Picked up a nice block from Sands. Another one from James Scott. And he'll get up to the 41-yard line of Miami. Mike Barr, the punter, forced to make the tackle. As Philip Buchanan comes up with a 12-yard return, although he ran a lot farther than 12 yards. Philip's going to say, I only got 12 yards out of that. He did pick up some nice blocks by Ethnic Sands, number one, but did a good job catching the football, ensuring it, making the first man miss. Right here, this is the key to the whole thing. Make somebody miss right away, and then use the speed in the field you have available to you. There's the block by Ethnic Sands that provides a little bit of breathing room. Then he gets another block downfield it looked like by number 29 James, James Scott. Scott did a great job of getting him those 12 yards Miami from their 41 Dorsey quick throw complete to Shockey at midfield and he'll pick up 11 yards and a first down for the Hurricanes Brian Bender 42 Jeremy Campbell number 44 combining on the tackle Frank you like the wrinkle of spreading Jeremy Shockey out and getting the matchup you want it's just like an easy pitch and catch to, to the guy that had 28 receptions last year. He has two touchdowns this year. Jeremy Shockey doing a nice job lining up at the tight end and when they flex him out to the wide receiver position. Shockey was even double teamed most of the game against Penn State and still caught seven passes. First and 10 from the Rutgers 49. Miami goes with a three wide receiver set. Rutgers with a late blitz. Picked up well by the Canes. Dorsey. Andre Johnson is wide open, and Dorsey overthrew him at the 20-yard line. Clinton Port has stepped up and picked up the blitz, giving Dorsey plenty of time. But Andre Johnson was overthrown by the junior quarterback from Orinda, California, and Ken Sill probably say, this one's on me. Well, Frank, that this time what happened was his eyes were wanting him to throw to the flat, but his feet didn't follow. Watch him never set his feet back to the right side. He, had, he was locked into a wide open wide receiver on the right side. Then he sees a bust in coverage. He wants to go to Andre Johnson, but never really set his feet to throw the football. He had a lot of time. Great job by the offensive line. 106 left to go here in the second quarter. Second and 10. Rutgers 48. Blitz coming. Dorsey overthrows Ethnic Sands out at the 47 yard line of Rutgers. Nate Jones was the closest defender. There's Dorsey's numbers already 239 yards in the air. And a couple of touchdowns. He had a career high, 344 yards last week. Well, you like what he's doing, spreading the football out. And he just missed a wide open Andre Johnson. I, I'd like to see him come back down to the middle of the field. We'll see what type of defense Rutgers is going to throw at him on third and ten. Two wideouts to the right side. Ethnic Sands motions across the formation. Rutgers on a blitz, quick dump off to Sands for the 45-40. Ethnic Sands down the sideline, finally shoved out inside the Rutgers 30-yard line. Dwayne Thompson pushed Ethnic Sands out of bounds, but that's a great play against the Blitz, John. And it's man coverage. You get him 
you, you get the guy that's following the motion man in a trail position, and Ethnic Sands was beating him before the play even started. You see the depth of the Rutgers defensive secondary. It's man-to-man, -man, but you already outman him to the outside of the field. Great block downfield by Andre Johnson. Nice job at the point of attack. Watch the young wide receivers, both Beard and Johnson, getting on the Rutgers secondary. That's the key to the play as well as the motion. First down from the 28. Dorsey will throw. Plenty of time. And overthrows his man, Ethnic Sands, at the 20-yard line, covered by Nate Jones. <laughs> and Dorsey looking at the official, John Smith, saying, hey, what about the late hit there? Ken Dorsey was trying. It was a little WWF there by Ken Dorsey. Number 96, Billy Tulloch, uh, the defensive tackle for Rutgers, comes in. It just gives him a nudge at the end of this play. Let's see, see if we can take a look. Just a little shove. Watch Ken Dorsey fall down and look right at the official. Say, hey, did you see that? What are you doing? Hey, in soccer, you get a yellow card for <laughs> diving. <in that. laughs> good try. That's a good try. You've got to commend him on the effort. 49 seconds left to go, second quarter. Second and 10 from the Rutgers 28. Miami already leading 24 0. Dorsey. Off ethnic Sands' hands and incomplete at the 25-yard line. The middle linebacker, Gary Brackett, had the coverage. The one thing it looks like Ken Dorsey's doing, that time Rutgers came out of man coverage and went to a little bit of a soft zone. He's going backwards before he sets to throw that little hitch or that little in and out to ethnic Sands. you got to be perfect when your feet aren't in the right spot to throw the football. That time he was just a little high and inside. He has a little bit more time than he thinks dropping back. Third and 10 from the 28. Sands, Beard, and Andre Johnson, three wide receivers in for the Hurricanes. Shockey lines up in the backfield along with Clinton Portis as the Canes go to the shotgun. Dead man coverage, Frank. Dorsey, shovel pass, Shockey. Read well by Rutgers, and Shockey will go down at, after a gain of only a yard. Brian Bender and Seabrooks making the tackle and a flag down on the far side of the field at the 29-yard line of Rutgers. Well, there's a new wrinkle for Miami. And Shockey comes up limping, and you don't like to see that. Offside on Rutgers, so the Canes will get another shot at it with 38 seconds to go here in the second quarter. Shockey coming out, Robert Williams coming in at tight end. As I mentioned, that's a new play for the Hurricanes, a shovel pass to the tight end lined up in the backfield. Yeah, nice wrinkle by Miami spreading everybody out, but that time the Rutgers defense wasn't full two or three guys on Jeremy Shockey before they bring him down. Let's hope he's okay. He walked to the sideline kind of gingerly holding his leg. Yeah, it looked like he either got twisted an ankle or got kicked in the shin. So the penalty will move it to the 23-yard line of Rutgers. It's third and five for Miami. And look for Ken Dorsey to go to the end zone this time. Full blitz coming. Pass across the middle. Andre Johnson can't handle it, or he might have had a touchdown. Dwayne Thompson on the coverage. Throw was a little bit behind Andre, but still catchable. It was a little behind, but catchable, as you said, Frank. you got to kind of idle your feet down if you're the wide receiver. Just make sure of the catch. Don't try to keep your feet going and get into the end zone. Catch the ball first. Even if you fall down, it's a first down, and the drive continues. So a 40-yard field goal attempt upcoming for Todd Seavers. Capshaw puts it down. Seavers' kick is on the way, and it is good. From 40 yards away, Todd Seavers converts his sixth field goal of this young season, and Miami leads at 27 to nothing with 28 seconds left to go in the second quarter. And John, I guess it's one of those, is the glass half full or half empty? Miami's dominating the game, but they haven't been sharp all the time. And I guess, you know, we come to watching this team and the talent they have, we almost come to expect perfection. Yeah, you do. And last year, they, they provided perfection all but one game against Washington. So you come to expect the best when you're watching Miami. And, and yes, they are. They're staggering through a 27 to nothing first half, so you can't really complain. The only thing you can do, there's a lot of points out there that the coaches can now go back and teach from the first half. They've dropped a lot of balls. They've missed some open receivers. They've uh, committed so many penalties last week and now this week, the, the dumb penalties that they're, they're committing. So they, there's a lot to coach and, and get this team a little bit focused on what they're not doing compared to what they are doing on the football field. Yeah, Dorsey missed a wide open Andre Johnson for a touchdown on that possession and uh, later they had to settle for the field goal. I wonder if they're going to block Carl Walker on this kickoff return. <laughs> you you I think, think they have somebody assigned to him? There's one guy that got hit last special teams play that is saying, somebody find Carl Walker and put a hat on him. There's Jeremy Shockey, and uh, being checked on by the training staff. Looked like he was holding his shin to me when he when he came up from that last tackle. That's the one thing you'd hate to see in games like this is guys get hurt. And of course, uh, Joaquin Gonzalez won't play the rest of the day. He's got a shoulder sprain. 
Happened on Miami's first possession of the game. Dennis Thomas and Nathan Jones back to receive the Todd Sievers kickoff with just 28 seconds left to go in this first half. Miami leading 27 to nothing. Sievers with the kick. Coming to Nathan Jones at the seven. Uh-oh. Jones has a hole. Nathan Jones, penalty flag down. Jason Gathers coming back to make the tackle on a flag down back at the Rutgers 30-yard line. I think they're going to bring this one back. And it is a hold against Rutgers. Well, they got somebody blocked in, but they didn't do it legally. <laughs> there was a takedown somewhere around the 25-yard line. Let's see if we can pick it up. Good job this time by the special teams, creating the wall, getting a little bit of a seam in there. Right here, you can't tell if there's a hold anywhere. It but happened out of the view of yeah, our cameras. it sure did. Good job that time by the Rutgers special teams getting the ball close to midfield, but it'll all be returned inside the 20-yard line, probably inside the 15. Miami's last scoring drive, eight plays, 36 yards, a minute and 13 seconds, and Todd Sievers with the 40-yard field goal. So Rutgers, we'll see if they'll take a chance here with only 20 seconds left to go in this first half. Cubit gives it to Dennis Thomas. Thomas will pick up a couple of yards to the 17-yard line. William Joseph, number 94, and Antrell Roll, the true freshman from South Dade High School, in on the tackle, and we're counting down from 7, 6, 5, and that'll do it for the first half. Rutgers will not snap it again. So we have reached halftime here at the Orange Bowl. Miami dominating as expected against Rutgers by a score of 27 and nothing. Still some plays out there to be had for Miami. The lead could be bigger. We'll be back with our halftime activities right after this here on Fox Sportsnet at halftime. It's the Hurricanes 27, Rutgers nothing. Start of the third quarter here in the Orange Bowl. Miami with a 27 nothing lead over Rutgers. Todd Sievers will kick it off for the green-shirted Hurricanes. Nathan Jones and Dennis Thomas back to receive for Rutgers. And as Larry Coker said last week when Miami was up 30 to nothing on Penn State, he doesn't want the game to deteriorate. There's a little pooch kick. Fair catch signaled and made at the 30-yard line of Rutgers. Number 39, Viana Lukabu made the fair catch. So it'll be first and 10 for Rutgers. And Ryan Cubitt will lead the white-shirted Rutgers Scarlet Knights onto the field. And place it at the 32-yard line. Looks like much of the starting defensive unit in for Miami to start this second half. Dennis Thomas moves into the I formation along with Seth Stanton, the fullback number 40. And now they split out of the backfield as Rutgers will spread five wide. Cuba takes the shotgun snap. Big pressure from McDougal. Pass is dropped and incomplete. Aaron Martin, the intended receiver, Jonathan Vilma, was all over him. Well, as you said, Frank, Jerome McDougal just wearing out the offensive tackles for Rutgers right now. Number 73, Brian Duffy cannot hang with big number 95, the junior, 6'2", 260. He had uh, five total tackles last week against Penn State. He had some five quarterback hurries, meaning he's getting to the quarterback almost in time, just as he did on that play. That was clearly a hurry. Second and 10, Rutgers with three wide receivers to the right side of the formation, the bottom of your screen. And now a direct snap to Trez Moses, the wide receiver, and he's gonna go down back at the 31 yard line. That's a loss of a yard. Mike Rump, number eight, coming up from the cornerback position, number eight, to make the tackle along with help from DJ Williams, 17. I've seen them all today, Frank. There you see the quarterback, the freshman Cubit, going out of the out of the screen in motion, a direct snap back to the running back. But Miami right on the ball. Nice pursuit by number 17, DJ Williams on the play, as well as number eight, Mike Rump, as you see in your screen right there, the cornerback. Now credit Rump and DJ Williams with a tackle for a loss of a yard. Rutgers from their 31, and they'll go with this swinging gate formation. Cubit, pressured by Andrew Williams, throws complete underneath. Moses will not get the first down. He's up to the 40-yard line where Jonathan Vilma made the tackle. He did pick up nine, but it was a third and 11 play. 
Rutgers coming that with that formation in the first series against Miami. And that time, Miami doing a good job pursuing to the football. It looks like Rutgers will bring out the punting unit, which has been a little bit of a, a hit or miss for Rutgers today. Second time, Rutgers has used that swinging gate formation. It's a third and two. Philip Buchanan to receive the Mike Barr punt. And movement along the lines, and they'll stop play. Uh, hopefully for Miami, they were drawn offside because they jumped. And if so, that would be a first down. Let's see what John Smith has to say. Rutgers looked, yeah. is signaling their first down. Their offense is coming back on the football field. That'll move it to the Rutgers 45-yard line. So a mistake by Miami on what should have been a three and out, and Rutgers will keep the football. On fourth and less than five yards, you never, never go after a ball and jump offside. Even if you think you can block the punt, you wait that half second because you don't want to just hand them a first down. Couldn't agree with you more. That's And that's one of the things that the coaches and players know. They're calling on the sidelines, stay on side, stay on side, because that's the only thing that can prevent you from not getting the football back. And now the officials stopping play again. And Miami going with their base defense on a first and 10 from the 45. Thomas and Stanton shift into the eye behind Cuban. And Whistle stop this play before it can get started. Miami may have been in that neutral zone and may have... Uh, caused the flag to come early, but I think Rutgers, somebody on Rutgers' side may have drawn him offside. Well, it is five yards against Rutgers. It'll move it back to the 40. It'll be first and 15. So the weather's been sloppy from the start, and uh, for both teams, the play's been a little bit sloppy. You know, even in a game like this, it's 27-0 with 13 minutes left to go in the third quarter. You have to keep your concentration at a high level. One, you'll play at a, at a higher level, but you don't want to cause the, the stupid penalties, and, and it may cause injury down the line. You have to keep your, your performance level at the highest standard. Out of the shotgun. Cuba trying to set up a screen, and that ball was deflected by Matt Walters at number 91. Del Rico Fletcher is trying to set up on the wide receiver screen, but Matt Walters... The junior out of uh, Melbourne, Florida, 6'5", 262 pounds, came through to bat that one down. Yeah, nice timing by Matt Walters. Knows it's a screen. He's already committed to the quarterback, so he leaves his feet at the last minute to try to bat this Ryan Cubitt pass down. He did exactly that. You see the streak, streaky receiver, Fletcher, number seven, coming in, trying to catch the ball, but Walters doing an excellent job at the line of scrimmage. Even Greg Schiano said this week, Matt Walters looks like he's bigger and stronger, and this is going to be another illegal substitution penalty on Rutgers. You know, John, you said before, it's going to be tough for Rutgers to line up and play Miami straight up, but it almost seems like they're trying to be too complicated and they're messing themselves up. Yeah, it's almost like they're, they're tricking themselves into tr trying to play this football game. And Greg Schiano's not happy about this on the sideline. He's trying to communicate to his offense to get in the right formations, get in the right spots, but he should direct some of that to, to the assistant coaches, getting the right personnel on the field and the right unit on the field at the same time. Now they're waving this off, so... Uh, the official's on a boo-boo there. All right, so it's still second and 15 from the 40-yard line. Maybe we should run out of the tunnels and start the second half all over again, wow. Frank. 12.52 to go, third quarter. It's Miami 27, Rutgers nothing. Three receivers split to the bottom of the screen. Including the tight end, L.J. Smith. Motion now from Jerry Andre to make it four receivers on this side. That's a lateral pass, complete to Smith. He dropped the ball. Al Marshall there to make the tackle. Beautifully read by Marquise Fitzgerald, who forced Smith to drop the football, and then Marshall cleaned up on the tackle. That'll go down as a loss of four. Marquise keeping his eye on the football. Uh, personally, can't stand this play when you go throw a lateral behind a line of scrimmage. Only bad things can happen, especially when you're playing a tough, aggressive team like Miami. You see, number 27 was the first guy there. Marquise Fitzgerald doing a nice job in the Rutgers backfield, along with number 25. Al Marshall doing a great job out of the secondary as well. This is a third and 19 play for Rutgers. Cuban out of the shotgun. 
Hubert pulls it down, shovel pass, complete to Thomas, who got away from one tackler, but then is brought down by Andrew Williams and Matt Walters at the 39-yard line. It's a gain of three, and it'll bring up a punting situation for Rutgers. Well, Jonathan Vilma had him in his grasp, but did a good job to slow the running back down on that on that flip toss ahead from Ryan Cubitt, almost like a shovel pass. He was just trying to get it out of his hands. Did a good job of getting it to a would-be wide receiver or running back in the case, but paid the price there from under 94, William Joseph. Philip Buchanan will stand back to receive the punt at the Miami 20-yard line. Mike Barr to kick it away from the Rutgers 25. Good snap. Barr gets his kick away. A driving kick. Sending Buchanan back to the 12. There goes Philip Buchanan breaking through, and he'll get to the 32-yard line of the Hurricanes. Well, Miami will start first and 10. Number 85, L.J. Smith making the tackle for Rutgers. And the Canes will have a first and 10 from their 32. So a nice return by Buchanan, who did not dance around. He just looked for the crease and took it. 11 minutes, 13 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Hurricanes lead it 27 to nothing. Okay, I'll wrap up with Drysdale, pick up Joe Jr., and swing by the printer. Joe's the type of guy who likes to be productive, especially when he's working at home. That's why he went to fastaccess.com. Joe got Bell South Fast Access Internet service for $45 a month. That's usually less than dial up in a second phone line. Fast Access DSL lets him download files in a flash, talk on the phone, email his brother, all while he's surfing the web. He also got a $50 web certificate for signing up online. And the best part? Now Joe has plenty of time to relax. See if you can get Fast Access DSL. Go to fastaccess.com. Connect and create something. Bell South. When you travel on business, don't downsize. Amerisize at Amerisuites. Need more room to spread out? Get more workspace and features like high-speed internet access, plus more space to unwind in a comfortable suite for the price of an ordinary hotel room. And when it comes to breakfast, don't downsize. Amerisize. Get Amerisuites' free bountiful breakfast buffet every morning. Next time, check into Amerisuites. Don't downsize. Amerisize. Florida Panthers have new owners, and with it, yes, the Burray brothers have been united in South Florida. At the age of 21, Roberto Luongo was voted the best young prospect. You've got a lot of reasons to get Panthers season tickets, because we've got one goal. Win. Get season tickets now, starting at just $2.99. Call 954-835-BUCK. Won that one. Well, the Hurricane fans want Washington. That'll be next week. Right now, it's the Canes 27, Rutgers nothing, and uh, a little bit of an exchange program between these two schools, if you will, or at least these two states. Miami has six New Jersey players. Rutgers has 10 players from the state of Florida, including six from South Florida, so a little uh, cross-pollination there of high school talent. Yeah, Miami's got uh, a streak going with players from New Jersey and Pennsylvania and throughout the East, so a lot of exchanging uh, of skilled players from the state of Florida and going to get some bulk. From, from the other states up north, and there you see a good shot of your All-American, Brian McKinney, who's done an excellent job in the first half for this offensive line. From Woodbury, New Jersey. Exactly. 6'9", 336-pound senior, and as you can see, the rain has begun to fall harder here in the second half. First half was pretty much just a light drizzle. First and 10, Miami from their 32. Kevin Beard motions across the formation. Give us to Clinton Portis. Find a nice block from Vernon Carey, and he'll go across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Torrance Hedgie, number six making the tackle for the Rutgers defense as Portis picked up three on a first down carry. Look for Miami to run the football a little bit more in this third quarter with the rain falling a little heavily. Brett Romberg did an excellent job this summer, number 66, really turning that nose guard back and giving some room to the right side for Bibla and the rest of that crew up front. Vernon Carey, you see number 60 there, doing a great job on the offensive line. Just a miserable day weather-wise here at the Orange Bowl. Second and seven. Dorsey, three-step drop. Wide open. Line. Jeremy Shockey's got it. There goes Shockey. 30. Jeremy cuts back to the middle, and he's right down at the Rutgers 10-yard line. Sean Seabrook saved the touchdown for the time being. Well, that's what you get 
when you split him out to the outside, you think he's a big load, but he can move, and he did a great job at the line of scrimmage. Although he's hobbling back to the huddle, he makes a miss on the outside. The cornerback takes for granted the size, but he knows he has some speed, gets by the corner. You see right there, Nate Cologne, and now it's off to the races. The big guy trying to pump it into the end zone for Miami. Gets dragged down from behind by Seabrooks, number 23. Great job by Ken Dorsey, putting some air under the football, and letting his big tight end run underneath it. 56 yards on the completion from Dorsey to Shockey. First and goal from the eight. Portis with the football, puts his head down and gets close to the five-yard line. It'll be second and goal for the Hurricanes. Bill Hambrick, number 45, credited with the Rutgers tackle. And it'll be a second and goal. And this is where the Canes have kind of bogged down on a couple of possessions, both against Penn State, settling for four field goals, and here against Rutgers. Shockey coming off. Looks like he's got that right ankle taped on the outside. He yes. might have a problem. That might be the last you see of him today. Yeah, he heard it in the first half, came back with the tape job here in the second. On a second and goal. Dorsey gives it to Portis. Portis tripped up, but still gets down to about the two-yard line. Number 42, Brian Bender got a piece of Portis's ankle as he came on the blitz. You called it, Frank. Bender was the only guy keeping number 28 out of the end zone. Good, tough running inside the tackles again by Clinton Portis. You see Bender right there just getting a piece of his right leg. Clinton trying to hurl himself towards the end zone. Gets down to the two. Jeremy Shockey back in for Miami. As the Canes will go with a double tight end on his third and goal from the Rutgers three. Eight fifty-five left to go third quarter. Miami up 27 to nothing. Give to Portis. Portis to the end zone. Touchdown, Clinton Portis. Nice cutback by Clinton Portis for a three-yard touchdown run. 8.44 left to go third quarter. It's now 33-0 Kings with the extra point attempt upcoming. All set up by that 56-yarder from Ken Dorsey to Jeremy Shockey, number 28, Clinton Portis. He does the rest. Good, tough running. Two hands on the football. He's got his shoulders down, and he finds the end zone for a hurricane score that'll push the lead to 33 to nothing. Todd Sievers on for the extra point. Miami just went with power football, and they push it into the end zone. Capshaw gets it down. Sievers' kick is on the way, and it is good. And with 8.44 left to go in this third quarter, it's now Miami 34, Rutgers nothing. Clinton Portis picking up his first rushing touchdown of the season. We'll take a break. It's Miami 34, Rutgers nothing here at the only. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in the program. Back at the Orange Bowl, five minutes to go in the third quarter. Larry Coker's Miami Hurricanes with a 34-0 lead over Rutgers. Scarlet Knights have the ball at their two-yard line. Dennis Thomas, and he goes nowhere. Vince Wilfork in there to make the first contact, and then Jarrell Weaver, number 58, finished off the tackle. Yeah, Rutgers has to be very careful, Hill, not to get a safety because Miami's been dominating that offensive line of scrimmage. See number 58 coming out for Miami right now. Jarrell Weaver doing a nice job on first down for this Canes interior line. Loss of a yard. Second and 11 from the one. Empty backfield. Cubit with a sneak. He'll get out to the three, maybe the four-yard line. Just giving himself some room. And it'll bring up third and eight for Rutgers. Probably one of the worst feelings for a young quarterback is to come out with the ball on the one yard line with a wet football and it's been raining very heavily uh, this afternoon in the Orange Bowl. So looking down at that long field, just trying to move the chains once or twice to gain some field position. Santonio San Thomas, number 56, the sophomore. Uh, Bell Glade in on that last tackle for Miami. They'll spot it at the three. So it'll be third and nine. Cuban, three-step drop. Throwing and nearly intercepted by Edward Reed. Sean Carty, the intended receiver, and Edward Reed nearly had his second interception of the season. Very tough throw and catch that Rutgers has been trying versus cover two all day, meaning there's a quarterback that is head up on the wide receiver, and Edward Reed's coming from the hash. You're going to try to prevent that long throw. It takes a long time on a dry day, especially with a wet and heavy football today. Edward Reed almost had a couple interceptions on that one play. And now Mike Barr will be backed up against the edge of his end zone. To punt it away to Philip Buchanan. 
Miami lining up like they're going to try and come after this kick. Good snap. Barr gets it away. Driving Buchanan back to his own 45-yard line. Buchanan taking it right up the middle. Buchanan, he might go. Will Buchanan to the end zone with a punt return for the touchdown of 55 yards. Unofficially, it may be closer to 56. We'll check, but with 325 left to go, Philip Buchanan doing his best Santana Moss impression, running it back for a touchdown. That's exactly right. He's doing a great interpretation of little number six going down the middle on special teams for a touchdown. Great job by Philip Buchanan and a couple great blocks. It looked like Kellen Winslow Jr. also with a big block down the middle of the football field. You see everybody working hard. They've been doing that all afternoon on special teams. It just takes a little time for Philip Buchanan to pick a whole great block there by number 93, John Square. And then it's off to the races down the middle, Buchanan for six. That makes it 40 to nothing with Seaver's extra point coming up and it is good. And with three minutes and 25 seconds left to go in the third quarter, Miami has stretched their lead to 41 to nothing. Philip Buchanan, the junior out of Lehigh, Florida, will call that a 56-yard punt return. Probably the biggest play was made by number 25, Al Marshall. He let Philip Buchanan make the first guy miss, didn't block him in the back. That time, a good decision on special teams, and that allows Buchanan to go in for the touchdown. Well, you got to remember, even in a game like this, John, football is still a game of field position. You go back to the cap shot punt that's down at the one yard line. You force the punter to, to rush his kick to avoid getting it blocked. And the coverage isn't as good coming out of your own end zone for Rutgers because you have to stay that extra half second to protect. And that gives Buchanan all the time he needs. And Miami's been so close to breaking one on special teams today. They've done a nice job of hustling down on cover teams, getting in the right positions for the blocking on the return teams. And you see the celebration on the sidelines, a well-deserved smile and a drink of Gatorade by Philip Buchanan. Philip Buchanan, considered by some to be a better baseball player than a football player coming out of high school. But I'll tell you what, after spring practice, one of the Hurricane coaches said to me, the best football player on our team is Philip Buchanan, period. Because in spring ball, they couldn't complete a pass on him. Rob Chudzinski, the offensive coordinator, told me a couple weeks ago, I know our wide receivers are getting better in the ball because we're catching a couple balls on Philip. In the spring, we didn't catch anything on him. It's a great defense. They've got a, a wealth of depth at the secondary position. And, and today, other guys have come up big on special teams. Sykes, number 36, Al Marshall's done a great job, but Philip Buchanan's an anchor on that special team. Well, Todd Sievers will kick it off. Nathan Jones and Dennis Thomas back to receive. And this will drive Jones all the way back five yards deep. He'll take a knee and a smart thing to do. The touchback will bring it out to the 20 yard line. That's where Rutgers will start first and 10 with three minutes and 18 seconds left to go in this third quarter. And I'm sure at this point, we may have seen the last of Ken Dorsey. I think you've seen the, the last, of, last of this guy too. Jeremy Shockey getting some ice on that. It looks like his Achilles or his ankle. And he's, yeah, you're done. That's right, put him on ice. Rutgers will snap it first and 10 from the 20. Jeremy Shockey had a career-long reception today, uh, 56 yards. Tickets sold for this game, 39,804. And even despite the rain, I think most of those people showed up. Cubit out of the shotgun. Trez Moses takes the handoff after he came in motion. Moses cutting inside, picks up only a yard. Jarrell Weaver, number 58, made the contact. Moses tried to spin away and fell down after a gain of a yard. Nice pursuit that time by the young Hurricane defense. You're not going to beat him to the perimeter. That time Weaver was on to what Moses was up to. A nice handoff there on the run by the young freshman quarterback. And there you go. You can't beat him to the outside. Miami's pursuit is too great, too fast to get outside. Miami's defensive line now made up of Jamal Green, Santonio Thomas, Vince Wilfork, and John Square. That's the second unit. And not a lot of drop off in that unit. Hubert will throw. Blitz coming. It's Gerald with the sack and a fumble. There's John Square to pick it up and will score a Miami touchdown. A Miami team which scored eight defensive touchdowns last year has their first of 2001 as Marquise Fitzgerald, the nickel, came on the blitz. Marquise coming on the edge. Nobody picks him up on the Rutgers line or defensive or offensive back. It's an empty backfield. Nobody there to pick him up. You got to get rid of the football. You see Fitzgerald 
throwing the football out around the five yard line, 93 square. The defensive end picks it up and rumbles in for the touchdown, but that's gotta be on the quarterback. He's got, gotta get rid of the football. Nobody there, too many defenders coming in and not enough guys in white jerseys to pick them all up. An easy defensive score for the Hurricanes. A five yard fumble return from John Square. Fumbled snap and Todd Sievers will pick it up and fall on it. Of course, the defense can pick that up and go the other way for two points. So the snap a little bit high and with a very, very wet football, it went through Freddie Capshaw's hands. So the extra point attempt is failed and it stays 47 to nothing for Miami. John Square, the freshman defensive end out of Houston Yates High School. They list him at only 201 pounds, John. For a defensive end, you say that's ridiculously light, but really he only plays in passing situations and he's very, very difficult to block off the edge. And he did a great job on special teams on the, on the last special teams play to provide Philip Buchanan a little room to run up the middle. Now he comes back with a 21-yard fumble return for a touchdown. He only had to go five yards. He picked it up on the five, so we'll give him a break there. And Larry Coker has to be happy with the energy that they're playing with later in the third quarter with 2.33 left to go in the third. And we are going to see the last of Ken Dorsey, I'm sure, as Derek Crudup is warming up for the Hurricanes on the sideline. But Miami with a, both a special teams and a defensive touchdown to really blow this thing wide open here in the third quarter. It was 27-0 at halftime. It's 47-0 now with 2.33 left to go in the third. So, John, uh, a big day for Miami playing like the number one team in the country. And the scary thing about it is both this game and the Penn State game, it could have been worse for the other team. Miami could very easily be up another couple touchdowns in this football game with still a quarter left to play. As you see the backup quarterback Crudup on the sidelines, warming up, taking some snaps. He'll be into this football game in a short time. Now well, here's Sievers kickoff with Thomas and Jones again deep. And this again, Todd Sievers doing a fantastic job on kickoff so far this season as Nathan Jones takes it for the touchback and Rutgers again will start at the 20 yard line. It continues to pour here at the Orange Bowl coming out of the east now, Frank, and Looks like it's been coming down pretty hard, this hard, for about the last 15 or 20 minutes. And I don't want to jinx anybody, but it seems like this field here at the Orange Bowl is holding up pretty well. We haven't seen a lot of slip and falls. No, we haven't. And it's been coming down by the bucket full. You can see right there against the lights. It's been coming down fairly hard for most of this third period. Well, we've got a new quarterback, Ted Trump, in number 16. In at quarterback for Rutgers. And the freshman, Ricky Cook, number five in a tailback. That's Cook with the football. Still going, and he'll pick up close to five yards. Jarrell Weaver and John Square making the tackle, along with Vince Wilfork. Ricky Cook regarded as maybe the best running back in New Jersey last year, and he decided to stay home and play for Greg Schiano. Out of Montclair, Ricky Cook, you're right, highly regarded around the nation as a, as a running back that could go anywhere he wanted to, deciding to stay in the state of, in the state of Rutgers. 6'1", 235 pounder. Here's Ted Trump, who started his athletic career at Rutgers as a member of the baseball team. And again, it's Ricky Cook. Hit by Howard Clark and no game. Howard Clark, number 45, shooting the gap. And Clark, one of those Jersey guys from Pensacola, New Jersey, right across the river from Philadelphia. Here's a guy who started at the weak side linebacker last year. And he's the backup middle linebacker this year. So, That's I mean, that right. just tells you about the kind of depth Miami has. Yeah, Clark and Campbell converging on the football. A lot of linebackers around the ball for Miami. you got a fast group in there. And really, Frank, you said it. There's no decline when Miami makes substitutions either on the defensive line, linebackers, or defensive secondary. These guys came to play, and they've got about a, a great wealth of depth on the defensive side. Third and a short five for Rutgers. Trump with his first throw. Has some time, dumps it over the middle complete to David Springer, who should have a first down to the 31-yard line with Al Marshall making the tackle. David Stringer, the son of the Rutgers women's basketball coach, Vivian Stringer, who is in the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. Well, great effort on the, on the end of this play by David Stringer, the senior wideout. Watch him reach the football out over the 30 to the 31-yard line to get that first down. Great coverage by Al Marshall, but a nice effort by the senior wideout. 49 seconds left to go in this third quarter. Trump will give it to Ricky Cook. And he is tackled after a gain of three or four yards. Howard Clark, number 45, there to make the tackle. Call it a gain of three. 
And it'll be second and seven. And I'm sure for Greg Schiano, a return to South Florida, he knew it probably wouldn't be pleasant, and it certainly isn't. The weather makes it even worse when you're getting beat like this. Yeah, it makes it miserable on the sidelines. Now he's just trying to get things, get his backup players in on both on offense and defense, trying to improve and get some playing time for these guys against a, a number one team in the nation in Miami. Greg Schiano said, I wouldn't have taken this Rutgers job if I didn't feel they were committed to doing the things you need to do to win in major college football. And that means spending money going out and revamping the uh, facilities and doing the things he needs to do recruiting wise. And, and they've committed to Greg Schiano and uh, he's giving him 110% effort. You could see that intensity on the sidelines. Well, the one thing I knew about this game is, yes, Miami had the better team, but I knew Rutgers would come and give maximum effort because that's what Greg Schiano is about. He's a max effort guy. Yeah, there's just not enough talent in white in white shirts today to, to really make up for the deficit. A little bit of a clock problem and a little bit of a reverse seconds. problem. Game clock should show 26 seconds. We'll reset the game clock to 26. As if that was really necessary. <laughs> Can't we just get on with this football game? I'll tell you what, I'm looking to the east, the open end of the Orange Bowl, and it looks nasty over downtown Miami. Yeah, you can barely make out the buildings going that way. It rained hard prior to the game. In fact, kickoff was delayed 45 minutes. First half was just a light drizzle. And here in the second half, it's been raining very steadily. But the field seems to have held up pretty well. And now they have reset the clock at 26. That rain you're seeing on the right side of your picture, that's actually coming off a ledge. So it's not raining quite that hard. On a second and seven. Trump gets to Cook. Cook bouncing outside, met by Chris Campbell at the 35-yard line. They'll pick up only a yard. That'll be third and six for Rutgers. Flag down on the near side of the field. Well away from the play. Here's a look at Chris Campbell, the senior out of Mount Pleasant, Texas. Looks like we got a face mask, if I can read lips correctly, on, uh, on Miami, I believe. That's one of the fouls. Illegal motion, offense, personal foul, face mask, defense, offset, second down. So they'll replay second down. It will remain second and seven. They'll move the ball back to the 34-yard line. And they'll replay the down. The only uh, hurricane that I thought was in the area of that flag was Marquise Fitzgerald. So I'm guessing that he was the guilty party on the face mask. That is the end of the third quarter here at the Orange Bowl. It probably can't end soon enough for Rutgers. Larry Coker is still trying to fire his guys up. The second teamers are going to get a lot of playing time as we go to the fourth quarter with Miami leading Rutgers by a score of 47 to nothing here on a rainy day at the Orange Bowl. We'll be right back on Fox Sportsnet with the fourth quarter after this. Today. Start of the fourth quarter at the Orange Bowl. It's Miami 47, Rutgers nothing. We must warn you, some of the videos you see during the program, you got to see this, are totally extreme and completely out of control. 30 minutes of sports achievements caught on tape. Some good, some bad, some very ugly. Tune in tonight at 11 right here on Fox Sports Net. On a second and seven, Rutgers will just keep it on the uh, quarterback sneak, and Trump will pick up two yards to the 36-yard line. It'll bring up third and a long four for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. A lot of young guys in there in the secondary for Miami right now. Al Marshall, a couple of true freshmen, and Sean Taylor, 26, and Antrell Roll, number six. It's time for these guys to come out and play a whole quarter of football, up 47 to nothing, and getting, gaining some experience. Trump out of the shotgun. Four-man rush, trying to set up a screen to Cook. Cook with the catch, and he's brought down by Marquise Fitzgerald, lost the football. And Vince Wilford picks it up for the Hurricanes. Double wide got it. Double wide got it. Big Vince. And I'll tell you what, he is very, very agile for a guy who's 346 pounds. Watch him move on this one, a screen play. You see Vince on the right side going down the guard, a little bit Olay, trying to let him in for the screen. A nice touch pass by Trump. Then the, you see number 27 putting the hat on him. 56 looks like causes the fumble on the play right there, Anton Santonio Thomas. Then you see the big guy, 75, Vince Wilfolk, on the fumble recovery for the defense of the Canes. You called it right, it was Santonio Thomas. 
who forced the fumble, and Big Vince Wilfork comes up with the recovery. So Derek Crudup in a quarterback as Miami will snap it from the Rutgers 42 to give to McGahee. Uh, McGahee loses the football, and Rutgers has it. Number 21, Dwayne Thompson, coming in to make the recovery. So McGahee guilty of a fumble for the second week in a row, and John, he tried to do too much. He tried to pick it up and run instead of just falling on it. Well, I think he was in the process of movement from the right side to the left side, his left arm. Watch to see if he moves the football here. He looked like he was trying to get it away from that would-be tackler, and you see Thomas coming in, number 21. That was just a good strip by the Rutgers defensive unit that time. Somebody gets a hand in, McKayhee loses the football, and Rutgers will take it first and 10. Although I do think he had a chance to just fall on it. From the Rutgers, 43. Ricky Cook with the football, and he'll go nowhere. It's Antonio Thomas in there, number 56, along with Vince Wilfork, number 75. No gain on the play. This is the time of the game in a, in a game that's a typical out of hand 47 to nothing that the guys on the front on offense and defense are just going to line up and tee it up. There's a lot of running from, from here on in the last 13-42 of this football game. Miami up comfortably, 47 to nothing. On second and 10, pitch to Cook, fakes the reverse. And he's going to run over Marquise Fitzgerald and take it out of bounds at the 45-yard line of Rutgers. A gain of two will be third and eight. Can we tell these guys to stay inbounds? Yeah, that's right. Marquise was trying to keep him inbounds. That's a big back in number five, as we said. Highly regarded Ricky Cook out of Montclair, New Jersey, taking Marquise for a ride out of bounds. That time off the right side. A fake reverse. Looked like they were going to give him the football. Cook keeps it the entire way. And you see a nice hit right there by Marquise just trying to wrap up and, and hang on for dear life. So where's my help? <laughs> That's right. Call it a gain of three. It'll be third and seven. Ball just past the Rutgers 45. Trump bobbled the snap. Loose football. Miami's got it. Fifth turnover of the day for the Hurricanes. Howard Clark comes up with the football. And Miami has their fourth turnover. Excuse me, fifth turnover. Thought we might see more of that, Frank, with the bad conditions. That time, new quarterback, new center, bad exchange. Santonio almost coming up with the football, but as you said, Clark on the football for the Hurricanes. Good job of being aware where the football was, and the Hurricanes, a couple green jerseys in, in nice position to get the football turnover. will bring the Miami offense and the backup quarterback back into the football game. Kyle Kobe, number 40, the fullback. Frank Gore, the true freshman, is the tailback. Kobe with the football. Kyle Cobia picks up five yards to the 40-yard line. Number 54, Cedric Brown making the tackle for Rutgers after a gain of five. Keep that clock rolling, coming up on 13 minutes to go. Joel Rodriguez also in the football game, the freshman center for Miami, number 70. On a second and five, Kane's in the eye. This is Frank Gore. Gore trying to pick his way through, and he'll get close to first down yardage at the 36-yard line. It'll be about a yard shot. Number 59, Marcus Perry on the tackle for Rutgers. Frank Gore, of course, uh, out of Coral Gables High, the best running back in Dade County history. Last season, in 11 games, he had 2,600 yards. Almost impossible. Frank Gore, right out of the hometown, putting on the... The U on his helmet for the first time at home. Doing a nice job on that second down. We saw some action last week at Penn State. Third and one. Give to Cobia. Puts his head down, tries to move the pile, and he has the first down at the Rutgers 34-yard line. Kane's offensive line right now. Carlos Joseph, 76 at left tackle. Ed Wilkins, 72 at left guard. Joel Rodriguez is the center. Joe McGrath is the right tackle, and Joe Fonagrassi is the right guard. So all second unit guys in there on the offensive line. And of course, you see 81 there, Kellen Winslow Jr. in at the wide receiver position. Larry Coker saying last week when Derek Crudup was in the game, he wanted to try to throw the football, but the game was out of hand. In this situation, kind of tough for him to get his feet wet throwing the football, but he'll do it on first down. Against the blitz, Derek steps up and he'll take off. And Crudup still going. Derek Crudup. He's down to the 10-yard line. 
Derek Crudup with a 24-yard gain before Nate Jones made the tackle. I think I anticipated a little bit too much. He went back to throw the football, decides to tuck it and run. As you said, Frank, against man coverage, everybody running away from the quarterback, and he does a great job. Derek does a tucking and under his right arm, making a couple people miss and almost getting into the end zone, getting it down to the 10-yard line. It'll be first and goal for the Miami offense. Well, Derek didn't throw the ball last week. That was more a function of field position. Miami had it inside their 20-yard line both times when he came in in the fourth quarter. So they just ran the ball and tried to avoid the turnover. There's Frank Gore. Gore must be great. Hey. And Frank Gore will have his first touchdown as a Miami Hurricane as he scores from 10 yards out. And that almost looked easy. It looked too easy. Gore coming in from the 10-yard line, making the first man miss right at the line of scrimmage. Excellent cut. Frank Gore goes in for his first collegiate touchdown. The first of what may be many, and he gets a big, big hug from Clinton Portis. Great move right at the point of attack, making three or four white jerseys miss, and goes in untouched from the 10. Todd Seaver is hard to attempt the extra point as Miami now leads it 53 to nothing. Frank Gore, the true freshman from Coral Gables High School, picking up his first touchdown as a Hurricane. Capshaw takes this snap without a problem, and Seavers knocks it through. And with 11 minutes and five seconds left to go in the fourth quarter, it's Miami 54, Rutgers nothing, Frank Gore, scoring on a 10-yard touchdown run for the Hurricanes. We'll be back with 11.05 to play right after this. Round the clock claim service, in case this happens in a car. Geico. A 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. At GEICO, we get the ball rolling on your claim quickly. Even in the middle of the night. GEICO. A 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Rum. Everything tastes better with a splash of the unexpected. The NHL returns to Tico Arena. The Carolina Hurricanes, a parent club of your Florida Everblades, are back for two exciting games at Tico Arena. First, the Canes will play Saturday, September 15th versus the Tampa Bay Lightning. Then Tuesday, September the 18th versus the Florida Panthers. Tickets are on sale now starting at just $12 and are available at the Tico Arena box office. All Ticketmaster outlets or by calling 334-3309. You can also order online at Ticketmaster.com. The NHL returns to Tico Arena. Don't miss it. We know sweat on hardwood, blood on ice, flesh on diamonds, rings and tires. We know hearts beat stronger, hopes hold harder. For victory, our souls we barter. We know karmic waves of pride and glory. And when pain's the only story, we know the tears you're concealing. You know we know. We know the feeling. There is Willis McGahee with some ice on the right shoulder. So Frank Gore getting into the game, not only because it's out of hand, but uh, apparently Willis McGahee a little bit nicked up. And I would have to assume it happened on that play where he fumbled and then tried to fall on it. You got to wonder about Joaquin Gonzalez's uh, availability next week as well as Jeremy Shockey. I think Shockey's more of aggravation of the ankle or Achilles, but we haven't seen Joaquin come back out or haven't located. You see the scoring drive, five plays, 45 yards, only 213 off the clock. Gore in from the 10. There's Seavers to kick it off. He's getting a workout today. Nathan Jones at the goal line. And he will go down at the 15-yard line. The Hurricane special team swarming. Some of those young guys, Ken Dangerfield, 47. Daryl McClover, 49. In on the tackle for the Hurricane special team. Rutgers will again start inside their 20. There's Joaquin Gonzalez. He want, he, does he want your job, John? I don't know. He's trying to talk to us. You see our Keo doing most of the talking down there. But it's good to see Joaquin walking around. Hopefully his uh, shoulder's okay. He looks like he's moving around all right. Well, you would, you know, they probably wouldn't put him back in the game anyway in the first quarter because, you know, it's a chance to get Vernon Carey some snaps in a game you should win easily. But we'll have to see for Washington next week. Trump gives it to Ricky Cook. 
Cook finding a seam, and he's ridden out of bounds up at the 24-yard line by Maurice Sykes, number 36. You would think freshman stay in bounds, Ross. Yeah, I was just going to say, you'd think he'd stay in bounds for us, but Cook doing a nice job coming into the game, the highly touted freshman, will be uh, challenging Dennis Thomas for a job in the, in the near future, it looks like. They mark it out at the 22. It's a gain of six, second and four for Rutgers. Miami in control of this game, 54 to nothing. They forced five Rutgers turnovers. Again, Cook with the football. And he ran into a stone wall by the name of Vince Wilfork. Number 75, Vince Wilfork. He is just a space eater, John. The <laughs> guy eats up that. space. It's a bad sign when you're running back and you get off, you get off from the ground and you're facing the wrong way. Watch this. He just gets rejected back towards his own goal line, and that's a bad sign. Watch big number 75 taking on almost three blockers and coming up from the ground. That's your strength. What a great play that time. Vince saying, not over here, buddy. From Lantana, Florida, the freshman. Loss of a yard. It's third and five. Rutgers with five wide, quarterback draw, and Trump will have a first down. Up to the 27-yard line, Ken Dangerfield, number 47, and Andrew Williams, number 99, making the tackle. Well, Andrew Williams has had kind of a quiet afternoon after those two uh, personal foul penalties in the first quarter. Late hits on the quarterback. Yeah, that's something that Miami's going to really have to pay attention to. You thought they would have tried to do that coming off the, the double-digit penalties against Penn State. Again, probably close to double digits, if not more. Uh, today against Rutgers, so they're going to have to eliminate those penalties next week against Washington. First and 10 from the 27, and Miami jumping into the neutral zone. We'll see whether Vince Wilfork was drawn offside or if he went of his own volition with nine minutes and 40 seconds left to go. I think he's taking credit for that one. He said, that's on me. You got me. You got me on the sna hard snap count, but I'm going to come back out you on second down here, or first down and five. I'll tell you what, that'd be a scary guy to line up across from. And he's only a baby. He's, he's only a freshman. That's right. He joined Miami. He actually signed the previous year, but did not qualify academically. So he joined Miami in the second semester, the 2001 spring semester. He practiced with the team for the Sugar Bowl and went all through spring practice. And Whistle stopped this Ricky Cook run before it can get started. Well, this is what we don't want to see, this game kind of deteriorating into a flag fest and a whistle fest. John Smith and his crew have had a busy day already. Ball, all star, offense, five yards, still first down. All right, so we'll go back where we started to the 27-yard line and first and 10. But, uh, Vince Wilfork uh, had, was very impressive in spring ball. He showed he can be a run stopper. And he does eat up some space in the middle of that He's line. He's a big man, but I tell you what, he's very quick on his feet. Does a good job moving down the line of scrimmage. You can see that today. There's the give to Cook. And Cook tripping over the 32-yard line. Darrell Weaver, number 58, got a hand on the ankle of Ricky Cook and tripped him up after a gain of almost five. He's second and five. Clock moving with 8.53 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Miami leading 54 to nothing. Frank Fork and John Kajemi with you. Good to have John back. Gino Toretta did a great job last week in the Penn State game, filling in for John, who was away playing in the Celebrity Golf Tournament and cashed a pretty nice check. Not bad. Here's Ricky Cook with the handoff. Got away from one tackler. Flag down as Vince Wilford made the tackle at the 36-yard line. It'll be a yard short of a first down, depending on what the penalty is. <laughs> He's an intimidating Defensive tackle, to say the least, big number 75. Personal foul on the Hurricanes. That'll give Rutgers a first down. Personal foul against the defense. 15 yards is assessed, and then the run, automatic first down. Next week, Miami and Larry Coker taking on Rick Neuheisel in Washington. They win today 23 to 18 over Michigan, so they stay uh, right in the mix of things. And Larry Coker there walking the sidelines, trying to get his team unscathed with 822 and counting left to go in this football game. First down at the Miami 49. Ricky Cook. And Ken Dangerfield drags him down for no gain. A little necktie tackle. 
I think Ricky Cook thought that there's no way that this linebacker from the inside can catch me. I think I've got enough leverage on him from the from the outside in. And look at Ken Dangerfield just pursue right behind Cook and take him down from, by the collar. Nice defensive play by the linebacker, Dangerfield. Dangerfield playing the middle linebacker spot right now with Jarrell Weaver and Daryl McClover, the other linebackers. Second and 10. Trump to throw. Throwing down the near sideline. Penalty flag down, and that ball is incomplete. Penalty markers are down. Jerry Andre, the intended receiver, as he was battling with Al Marshall. Intended for eating, Jerry Andre. Looks like they're going to call Al on the on the penalty there. Pass it for defense. 15 yards from the previous cross. Automatic first down. The uh, injury update on Willis McGee, he has a right shoulder sprain. He obviously won't play anymore today. We'll have to see next week. So a couple of 15-yard penalties keeping this drive alive for Rutgers as they move it to the uh, Miami 34-yard line. Al Marshall guilty of pass interference. He was beaten for the only touchdown last week against Penn State. In the fourth quarter. First and 10 from the 34. Ricky Cook escaped one tackle, and he's still going, taking Miami tacklers down to the 30-yard line. John Square, number 93, finally brought him down with some help. Yeah, that time Ricky Cook moving the pile on the on the short side of the football field. A lot of Miami tacklers in the area, but the white jerseys were just moving down the field that time. 93, the hero, John Square, with the touchdown recovery, the fumble recovery on defensive score, comes up with the tackle. Pickup was four to the 30-yard line. We're at 6.57 left to go in this ball game. Najee Davenport, his day, of course, done. He scored a touchdown back in the first quarter. Out at the Orange Bowl, still into it, urging the defense on. There's Ricky Cook, John Square chasing him down. Make it uh, 43, Marcus Jones on the carry, and Square stopped it for no gain. Marcus Three, third Jones. and six. Yeah, you're right. We're Marcus Jones getting into the football game from Florida, another native of the state of Florida, trying to make a presence here for Rutgers, but square on the tackle, just riding him down to the ground. Marcus Jones out of St. Augustine, Florida. And John Square, this guy has a chance to be an impact player. We're playing him uh, every down right now here in the fourth quarter. But you'll see him on pass rush situations in big games. There's a McGahee was done for the day, and Najee Davenport with the uh, visor on. So third and five for Rutgers. Fake pitch. Trump being chased by LeVar Scott. Trump throwing incomplete, intended for L.J. Smith with Daryl McClover on the coverage. And it'll be a fourth and five for Rutgers, and they have nothing to lose right now. They're rolling the dice. No rolling the dice, really. You want to go for it and get your players out there, try to get on the scoreboard. Willis and Nijay having a good good afternoon for the Hurricanes backfield along with Portis. A couple of Miami Central guys. Miami That's Central right. High School. The Rockets. The rocket power there with Najee and uh, Willis McGee. Well, here we go, fourth and five. And the remaining crowd at the Orange Bowl trying to keep the Hurricane defense pumped up with a zero on the board. And Whistles will stop this. Greg Schiano actually calling a timeout from the sidelines because they were going to get a time count violation. So Rutgers takes a timeout with five minutes and 50 seconds left to go. We'll take a timeout as well. 5.50 left here in the Orange Bowl. It's Miami 54, Rutgers nothing. We'll be right back. Today in Florida, 500 women heard the news. Some cried, others could only laugh, while some were simply speechless. And when months from now, hundreds of new babies are born, this day will be remembered as the one when everything was perfect. And the last thing on 500 Minds was health plans, which is exactly the way it should be. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Florida. The best health plan is the one you don't have to think about. When you call Compact Direct, you'll get a PC built exactly the way you want it. Like the Compact Presario 7000T. 
Starting at just $11.99, choose one of the latest Intel Pentium 4 processors, hard drive, memory, monitor, options like a CDRW drive, and even your choice of colors. To buy now, call 1-800-276-2360 and get a free compact printer and a free upgrade to Windows XP Home Edition. The NHL returns to Tico Arena. The Carolina Hurricanes, the parent club of your Florida Everblades, are back for two exciting games at Tico Arena. First, the Canes will play Saturday, September 15th, versus the Tampa Bay Lightning. Then Tuesday, September the 18th, versus the Florida Panthers. Tickets are on sale now, starting at just $12, and are available at the Tico Arena box office, all Ticketmaster outlets, or by calling 334-3309. You can also order online at Ticketmaster.com. The NHL returns to Tico Arena. Don't miss it. What do these words have in common? Clones, Rackham, and the King of Smack. These are all elements of Jim Rome's jungle. Each night he interviews the premier sports figures and athletes his way. Check it out, the last word with Jim Rome tonight and each weeknight at 11.30 here on Fox Sports Net. I thought you were the King of Smack. Well, well on the South East Coast. Florida, East, Coast. Right, East Coast. East Coast, right. West Coast. <laughs> Fourth and five for Rutgers from their 30. 5.50 left in this football game. Trump out of the shotgun. Four man rush, he's got some time. Swings it out, complete to Trez Moses. He'll get away and he still might not have the first down. That'd be short, Frank, by about a yard. James Scott there on the tackle for Miami. He only reached the 25 yard line. I think he needed to get to the 24. In which case the ball goes over to Miami, which it will. So the Kings defense holds and preserves the shutout with 539 left to go. It's a 54-0 Miami lead. Miami led at the end of the first quarter, 14-0. At halftime, 27-0. And after the third quarter, 47-0. Frank Gore has added a touchdown run here in the fourth. And the Hurricanes will take over at their 25-yard line. That's the redshirt freshman, Derek Crudup, at quarterback. Out of Deerfield Beach. Derek throwing. Goes low and incomplete. They say short hop by Kellen Winslow. So Kellen will have to wait for his first collegiate catch and Derek for his first college completion. I would think they'd like to, even though it's 54 0 and you're not really trying to run it up, you've got a guy who's never thrown a pass. <laughs> and a guy who's never game. Caught, a, caught a pass. You want to try to get him some experience so they're going to throw a hitch or maybe a screen or or something very short just to get a completion down the field. But like you said, Frank, you don't want to go down the football field up 54 points. Crude up on the draw to Gore. Frank Gore gets five or six yards. Alfred Peterson, number 92, making the tackle. And those two knocked heads in high school a little bit. Gore from Coral Gables, Peterson from Carroll City. Now I know that, that Gore is going up against maybe Rutgers' second unit, which isn't as fast as some of the units he's going to see down in the season. But his, he's got great explosiveness out of that backfield. You can see his speed immediately when he gets the football. It accelerates the top gear, and it doesn't take him one or two steps to get there. Third and a short five for the Hurricanes. They have to get to the 35. Gore again with the football. He's got room. Frank Gore to the 40. Midfield. Rutgers 35-yard line, bounced out of bounds by Dwayne Thompson. And Frank Gore showing his ability, John. He has got tremendous ability. That's what I'm talking about, Frank. Once he receives this football from the quarterback, watch the acceleration through the hole right there. He's, everybody else is going in slow motion, and Gore is still going and getting it to the outside. It's a foot race down the sidelines. Watch Gore finish the run. That's what you like to see in a young back. Watch him finish the run at the end. But the explosiveness right here, great blocking up front. It does a nice job of cutting it to the outside. There's the young receiver on the outside, gathers with a block. He's still fighting with 4.51 left to go in the fourth. Great job. Gore again after a 35-yard gain. Nice cut to the inside, still going. And Ben Martin takes him down to save the touchdown at the 15-yard line as Gore picks up another 19. Back-to-back -back runs of 35 and 19 yards for Frank Gore. That's a man among boys right now, Frank, the young freshman, number 32. Making some people miss and making them pay. Great job by the offensive line. A huge hole off the left side, but watch the move inside, outside, then back to the inside. Just losing number 20, Jarvis Johnson, the DB. Finally 29, Ben Martin on the tackle, but Gore going forward. Can't teach that, can you, John? No, not at all. Here's Kobe of the fullback with a carry, and he'll squeeze out three yards. He'll bring up a second and seven with four minutes and 19 seconds, and the clock moving here in the fourth quarter.
Frank Fort and John Congemi with you on Fox Sports Net. And of course, next week, the Washington Huskies, who will probably move up to around 10 or 11 in the polls with a victory this weekend over Michigan, will be in here to the Orange Bowl to face the Hurricanes. Under four minutes to go. Second and seven games. This is Gore. Gore still on his feet inside the 10-yard line. And Jarvis Johnson makes the tackle at the eight. Gore reminds me of the young Clinton Portis when he used to come into the game and make people miss. And even when there wasn't any room to run on the right side, he'd find a way. You see his numbers there, six rushes for 78 yards. He's going to come out of the game right now. And Jared Payton's going to come in to a, a, a round of applause for the Hurricane faithful that'll still here. The Coral Gables native coming out of the game to a, a well, a warm reception. Nate Leonard, a linebacker for Rutgers, is being attended to by the Rutgers trainers. He's down at the 13-yard line with an injury. We'll take a timeout with the injury. 3.28 left to go. The Hurricanes lead Rutgers by a score of 54 to nothing here at the Orange Bowl. All right, Junkyard Warriors, begin! I need that hose, and I need it quick. Junkyard Warriors like to build. We still need an axle. Thank you. Junkyard Warriors like to weld. Try to start it up. No, no. You got nothing? Junkyard Warriors no, no. like to win. A new season of Junkyard Wars premieres September the 12th. New day, new time. Wednesday at 9, only on TLC. Welcome to the coolest entertainment on earth. This is NHL Breakout. Slide into the fun and meet the players. Get here and test your slap shot. Play great games and join in the action. Take part in the best off-ice hockey festival anywhere for all ages. You have to get here when NHL Breakout rolls into town. Hosted by the Florida Panthers on September 22nd and 23rd and located at the National Car Rental Center. For more information, call 954-835-7777 or log on to NHL.com. Hi, I'm Kevin Millar. Fox Sports Net and the Florida Marlins are once again teaming up to help 68 inner city classrooms in Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach counties through Adopt-A-Classroom. It only takes $500 to help students and teachers get the tools they need to make this school year even more fun and exciting. If you or your company would like to adopt a classroom or receive more information on this rewarding program, contact Adopt-A-Classroom today. You can help build a brighter future for South Florida students. Three twenty-eight left to go, fourth quarter. Miami leading fifty-four to nothing. They have a third and four from the Rutgers eight-yard line. Crudup gives to Jared Payton. Payton slipped two tackles and still going. Good effort, but he'll lose a couple of yards. That play broke down from the beginning. Greg Pismuka made the tackle. Quick, spell Pismuka. I don't want. No, I fail. And a late flag coming down as well. You see Jarrett really had nowhere to go. No, from the get-go, they had white jerseys in the offensive backfield, trying to spin it back to the inside, but all that was going to do was get more, more of a headache for Jarrett. Then piling on right there, that might have been the flag we're looking, for, we're looking for right now. It is a personal foul against Rutgers, and that'll be half the distance to the goal. All right, Pismuka. Give me that one, Frank, because I don't want to attempt. Personal foul, defense. defense. Penalties had the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. All right, Pismuka. There's Greg and Marty on this Rutgers team. P Y S Z C Z Y M U K A. That sounds like alphabet soup. To me. <laughs> he needs to buy a vowel. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be first and goal from the five. That was my first question coming into the booth today, Frank. You could see it on my face. Right. How do you pronounce Pismuka? <laughs> or as you said, Pismuka. But yeah, that's what I said. Let him throw a fade route here. This is Jared Payton, touchdown oh, yeah. Hurricanes. Jared Payton with a five-yard touchdown run, and Miami extends their lead to 60 to nothing. I believe all the Miami backs have scored, the tailbacks have scored today, and that time nobody touches Jared Payton going up the middle to push the lead to 60 to nothing for Miami. Big hole by the offensive line, nobody there. You see the guys up front just moving white jerseys out of the way. Jared Payton, probably the easiest score he'll have this year. I think you or I might have been able to score on that with that hole. Giving a little love to his dad up top. Great kid, Jared Payton. 
And the extra point is up and good from Todd Sievers, and it is 61 0 Miami with two minutes and 48 seconds left to play. So a thoroughly dominating performance by the Hurricanes. Jared Payton, who missed all of spring practice after he cut his foot on some coral in the ocean and it became infected. So he missed all of spring ball, comes back in the fall, they switch him to fullback, but getting some reps of tailback here in a blowout, and he wasn't even touched. No, it wasn't even touched, and it's a great job getting into the end zone. You see two young backs, really, Gore and Peyton coming in and doing a fine job. Gore getting it all the way down inside the 10, and then Peyton finishing off for the six points. So the Rutgers Scarlet Knights will go home to New Jersey, and they knew they were going to be in for a rough one. I was talking to Mario Cristobal, the former graduate assistant and, and Miami Hurricane player, who is now the uh, tackles and tight ends coach for Rutgers. And we were talking about the game and what Rutgers did in their first game. And I was telling him about you know, my impressions of Miami at Penn State. <laughs> and Mario said, well, you're not making me feel any better. <laughs> yeah, I saw him before the game. And he, he had a smile on his face, but he had to work at it because I was asking him how it was going teaching the kids at Rutgers. And he says, well, it's going pretty well, but I don't have the athletes that I used to have at Miami. So that was the understatement of, of his day. And it's actually turned out 61 nothing for Miami. But you know what? If I know Greg Schiano and Mario Cristobal, this game, once it's over, it's over with. They'll move on move to the on. next one. That's right. You know, this is, I don't want to say it's a give up game for them, but they knew it would. It was almost impossible to beat this Miami team. But there are other things that they can accomplish because, you know, you go into the league schedule, that he's hoping to knock off some teams, build some momentum in New Jersey. Receiver's kick. Nathan Jones at the four. A little bit of a crease, but that's closed up in a hurry. Frank Gore, putting on his special teams hat, makes the tackle, number 32. That's what you do when you're a freshman. You come in and you run for over 60 yards, and you're right back out on special teams making a play. He's on film. He's always around the ball, whether he's carrying it or tackling somebody on special teams. Nice effort that time by the freshman. And I guarantee you he never played special teams <laughs> covering kicks he in said, high school. He said special what? He might have returned some kicks, right. kickoffs, but he, ne he never covered them. There's Jared Payton with the big smile after the touchdown from the 25. Rutgers has it first and 10. Only 236 left in this game. Ricky Cook with the football. And Ricky Cook knocked down by Al Marshall and John Square after he picked up four. Uh, John Square with a uh, very memorable day, his first collegiate touchdown, coming on a fumble recovery and return from five yards out as Miami has scored on offense, defense, and special teams in this football game. We said that a lot last year, and uh, this year holding true in the second ball game. Had 12 non-offensive touchdowns last season. On a second and six. Cook again, and he'll go down for a loss. Jarrell Weaver blitzing through to make the play. And that loss back to the 24-yard line. Nice job that time by the line of, of the offense or defense of Miami. You see right there, untouched. Coming right there is Weaver, number 58. Great job to another tackle for a loss for this Miami defensive front and linebacking core. Oh, a minute and 30 left to go, mercifully for Rutgers. And they face a third and 11. You got to say, good support today by the Miami fans coming out in a miserable day to watch a football game. Almost 40,000 here at the Orange Bowl. Loss was five on the last play. And the quarterback keeper, quarterback. Trump picks up a yard and it'll be fourth down. Only a minute left to go here in the Orange Bowl. The Rutgers just never has really come close to scoring in this game. No, they never really threatened the Miami defense, and even from the start of the game when they came out with a couple different formations that you don't normally see trying to catch Miami off guard, the defense has played spectacular, and the special teams probably even better. Mike Barr in the punt. And I got a stat for you after this punt, John. James Scott back to receive the kick. He'll let it bounce and take it at the 30. And Scott stepped out of bounds at about the 32-yard line. The last three years, Miami's going to run their record against Rutgers to 9-0, but the last three years, cumulative score, 180-6. to Wow. 
six points in three years is not doing it in any league. So there's only 20 seconds to go. Miami will take a knee as Troy Prasic comes in at quarterback for this final snap of the game. And the Hurricanes will walk away with a 61 to nothing victory. Prasic will give it to his fullback. And that'll do it. As the walk-on gets a carry, number 85, Ennis Crafton. Gets a carry for a yard, and we're counting down. Three, two, one. And Larry Coker walks away with victory number two. So the Miami Hurricanes come away with a 61 to nothing victory. Greg Schiano and Larry Coker shaking hands at midfield. It was easy for the Canes. They go to 2-0. Oh. Washington coming in next week. We'll be back to wrap it up from the Orange Bowl after this. University of Miami football on Fox Sportsnet has been brought to you in part by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Florida. The best health plan is the one you don't have to think about. Here's your final score, Miami 61, Rutgers nothing. Frank Fort and John Kajemi with you on Fox Sportsnet. John, a convincing and thorough win, certainly not unexpected by the Hurricanes, but you know, Washington next week, and there's some things they can still work on. For example, the 10 penalties, but again, big offensive day with 541 yards. Yeah, huge day throwing the football, 315, running the football over 200 yards. You see only two turnovers, and one was an underthrown pass early in the football game, kind of wet conditions. They got through. The biggest thing is they have to worry about their injuries at right tackle, at tight end, hopefully at running back, they're okay. So those guys coming out of this game getting prepared to play a, a high level against Washington. So a shutout again for Miami, 180 to six the last three years. Cumulative score against Rutgers, the final today, 61-0. Thanks for joining us here at the Orange Bowl. Catch more University of Miami action on Fox Sportsnet Sunday, September 16th at 5 p.m. when the Hurricanes match up against the Huskies of Washington. Coming up next on Fox Sportsnet is your Florida Sports Report. For my partner, John Kajemi, future member of the C PGA Senior Tour, I'm Frank Ford saying goodbye. Once again, the final score from the Orange Bowl, Miami 61, Rutgers nothing. Until next week when the Canes take on the Huskies, we'll talk to you then. I'm Frank Ford for John Kajemi. Thanks again. The Canes win big 61 nothing.